First order of business will be to approve our November minutes, and I'm going to call on our Vice Chairman, Paul Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have reviewed the minutes as sent out on the email and find them in order and move for approval. I have a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. And a second. I was just going to say that uh, while, I w while we were going through entering the budget amendments in, we noticed there was a couple of accounts that had typo in them. So I've reflected that in the minutes you have on your iPad to correct those. It was the account number, was, the account name was correct, but the account number had a typo on it. So we've corrected those on those minutes. Well, that's, that's the, the minutes we've been looking at. Yes. All right. <clears throat> All right. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, next up on the agenda is the investment report. And Mr. Beatty is uh, a little under the weather this evening. And so I think uh, Michael's going to cover that for us. So the, uh, the short version of the investments is the interest rates continue to rise. Um, our bank rate uh, for, this, for the month of November was 2.76%. And you will also see that reflected on the revenue report under the fund condition report that our uh, interest interest revenue continues to be up. Any questions on that? Did, you, did he have a CD that he put out? <clears throat> Looks like he did get a CD with a rate of 3.4%. And 3.9, uh, yeah, CD of 3.4 percent, and then we were able to buy some U.S. Treasury bills, earning us a rate of 3.9 percent. So okay. they continue to rise, and and that's definitely going to be reflected on the revenue report. You'll see some revenues that are up 100 percent from last year, and that's really due to interest rates. Kind of swinging around when Commissioner Johnson and Trey and I all came on the commission, the numbers we were seeing back then. Uh, you've heard the report. To, uh, I'll entertain the motion. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. A motion to approve. Second. And a second, Commissioner Serino. Any further discussion? Uh, hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, Michael, if you would, the fund condition report. So for the no month of November, our school facilities tax continues to be up a little bit. It is up 2.2% over prior year. So, so that, is, that is good news. Even with the economy slowing a little bit, that is still up 2.2%. Our cash balance at the end of November was $407,228,888.87. 90% of that was in operating funds and 10%, approximately 10% or 9.4% was in borrowed funds for the month of November. And then also I had a question uh, from Commissioner Harris last month over the mixed drink tax. Uh, the mixed drink tax is actually down a little bit um, from, from last year, however, um, that does fluctuate from year to year. We're, we're looking very comparable to, um, we're over what we got in 21, we're down a little bit from what we got in FY22. Um, for example, the schools got 734,000 uh, last year from mixed drink tax, and the county general fund got 22,000 last year. And so we're on, we're on pace to be very similar this year. And to touch on the revenue report, a couple of things of note. Like I did say earlier, the interest rates are up, so you'll notice um, that other local revenues are up. For example, in the general fund, 145%, that is a reflection of the interest rates, our interest income. Another thing to note is sales tax continues to be up. It is up 10.4% 10 10 a year to date from last year. And hotel motel tax continues to, to be up as well. That's up 22% as compared to last year. We have started getting even more property tax in. Um, I did update those numbers on the first page of that revenue report. So as of this year, we have gotten in 10.65% of our anticipated property tax. Um, and you can see dating back, you know, all the way to 2014, that's very, very much in line kind of with, with previous years. It, it's gonna fluctuate a percent or two depending on when the uh, mortgage companies, um, you know, pay some of the property taxes out of escrow there. And that concludes my report.
there any questions from the committee uh, or the finance director? He answered one question there. I was going to ask you if, if there was a spike in the sales tax increase, and you answered that question. So move to approve the report. I have a motion to approve. Second from uh, Second. Commissioner Harris. I have an answer a question, Mr. Chairman. Michael, can you um, bring us the next month uh, proceeds from the last year, the hall tax? I don't know if you can do that or not, because the liquor by the drink was what we were trying to offset that. And I'd like to know if you could, the, the amount that it was on the last year that we had it. I'm not sure when it was. I think it was 2019 or 2020. I can, I can look back and, and see if we can bring that next month to the committee. Thank you. Hey, we have a motion and a second. Are there any other questions for our finance director? Hearing none, I'll also entertain a motion here. Oh, we have a motion, I'm sorry. Any, any further questions? Call roll, please. Commissioner Irvin? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Serino? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. The motion carries. Uh, next up is our risk management financial report. Mr. Elam, somewhere out there, here he comes. <coughs> Good evening. So in the 264 fund for the month of November, you will see uh, $7,790,918 in revenue, expenses $6,654,734, Revenue less expenditures, a positive $1,136,184. For the calendar year totals, you will see $78,665,591 in revenue. Expenditures, $74,445,776. Revenue less expenditures, you will see a positive $4,219,814. Then for the fiscal year totals, uh, for revenue, you'll see $28,713,711. Expenses, $34,297,163. Revenue less expenditures, a negative $5,583,452. In the 266 fund, you will see for workers' comp for the month of November, $1,090.99. For OJI, you'll see $27,819.49. For a total of month of November 2022, $28,910.48. Year to date totals, workers' comp, $1,355,296.83. OJI, $202,836.05. And for the total, $1,558,132.88. Legal expenses, months of no, month of November 2022. Total is $37,321.48. And that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Okay, you've heard the report. Any questions for Mr. Elam? I have a quick, quick question on 266. The, what is, just for my benefit, the calendar year incidence rate, the county versus the state of Tennessee? Can you explain what that is and Incident rate, there's several different kinds. You've got severity, you've got a county incident rate. Uh, it's based on, there's a formula that you have, and I think it goes to 200,000 hours per incident. And so it's just a comparison for us, for the state of Tennessee, compared to the uh, what we're doing, uh, what they have, their state employees statewide. 
as which you can see our incident rate, the, the lower the better per 200,000 hours worked. Uh, in the 2021 incident rate, we're waiting on, uh, we thought we were gonna get it in November and we still haven't got it yet. Uh, you know, you, you would have thought that we would have it by now. <laughs> And we, we've called several times, but uh, it, in our comparison of what our OJI claims are compared to the state, you know, we're running much better. Thank you. Any further questions? Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve, do I hear a second? Mr. Piercy, second. I have a motion and second. Any further questions? Hearing none, call roll, please. Mr. Irvin? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Serino? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. All right, next up is uh, item five, ambulance service fund budget amendment and transfers. Welcome. Um, the, the first budget amendment is um, taking some money from last fiscal year that was in the, in left over from the budget that was donation money and putting it into our donation account. Okay, with the committee, go ahead with your second. Request. And then the- I don't know objections. <laughs> the second one has to do with the, the BJA grant and when they were figuring the money for this grant, they over figured on the benefit side. So they're wanting to, it's 9,945 and they're wanting to, the majority of it goes into um, uh, salaries and overtime line. And all the changes were coming out of line items that you've already got money for. Yes, and th this is a this is a no matching grant. And from the grant coordinator today, I think whenever they were figuring those, getting those figures, they used thirty percent, and it came back at about sixteen percent for benefits. Any questions for the director, Mr. Chairman? It came out of public safety uh, unanimously, didn't it? The first one did. The second one actually came in a, a yeah, little. It was generated by the finance department, yeah. The second one, because it's a grant related. <clears throat> you don't have any problem with it, though, do you, Mark? Oh, no, we're just moving money. Yeah, yeah, that, the, um, Usually the dependent is an estimate, dependent insurance is just an estimate until we know what plan the person that's actually gonna be in that job selects. And so then we can adjust it down as we have here and utilize it as salary and overtime. I like the matching grant, move to approve. We have a motion. Second. Second, Mr. Serino. Any further questions for Director Gaither? Uh, call roll, please. Mr. Irvin? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Serino? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Have a good night. All right. Uh, next is the general fund budget amendment and transfer for pause. Michael, are you doing all right tonight? Yes, sir. Thank you. Good evening, We've got two items for consideration. The first is to move money uh, within our budget to try to short some lines to get us through uh, the rest of the fiscal year. So no additional funds there, again, just moving within within our budget. And would you like for me to go on with a second one, Mr. Chairman? I don't hear an objection from the committee. Please do continue. Okay. The second one is to transfer some money. Uh, some of it is coming from within our budget. The uh, uh, majority of it, 30,000 is coming from our Paul's donation lines. Uh, this goes to various lines within the budget to be able to do um, some different um, options within our current shelter to be able to get some more office space uh, to get some folks off of top of each other basically in a closet so that they can perform their job um, much more efficiently. 
Mayor. If the committee desires the next further explanation or detail on this request, I'd be glad to help. Um, when I first took office, I think in the first two or three weeks, uh, Mr. Gregory invited me over to tour his facility, uh, which I undertook with all the directors. And quite honestly, I was amazed that um, at the work they were accomplishing literally stacked on top of each other like cordwood. And so I made a pledge to him that if we could find the resources inside his budget to help alleviate some of the overcrowding that he has with his staff and his volunteers, we would certainly undertake to do that. This is the result of that, um, that tour and his solution to that problem. So I, I hope the committee will um, assist us in alleviating that problem. Thank you. Any further comments? The only question I have, are you having any staffing problems? Can, can you get people to work for you now? It's up and down, it ebbs and flows. Um, right now, it's getting the, getting the folks that we have there trained, kind of have a backlog there. So I've held off on a couple of open positions so I can kind of get through some of that backlog. Um, but it's much better than it was back in the spring when, when everything was in such a dire situation. Any further questions from the committee? If not, we'll entertain a motion. So moved. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any further questions? If not, call roll, please. Commissioner Urban? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Serenio? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, all. Mike. Y'all have a good evening. All right, next up is the agreement with, let's see, the State Health Department Contract Amendment. Welcome. Good evening. Um, I'm here to present the motion to amend the State Health Department grant contract. Each year, the state of Tennessee and Rutherford County government um, enter this contract in which uh, Rutherford County is reimbursed by the state of Tennessee for fees paid, including the salaries of county employees at the health department. Um, the current contract was put in place before the raises for county employees were approved. And so this amendment would just increase that uh, grant contract to reflect that raise. Okay. Are there any questions from the committee? Mr. Chairman, we um, heard this at uh, Health and Education and um, it was received very well. So my motion is to approve the grant. So I have a amendment. motion to approve the grant. Second, any questions? So this is, uh, this is state money that we're receiving, correct? Yes, it's uh, under we're a the grant, there's no match. Correct, yeah, the state reimburses, reimburses the county the outright. Yeah. Thank you. Any further questions? I'll roll, Mark. Commissioner Urban? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Mr. Serenio? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, sir. All right, next is a uh, agreement with Consolidated Utility District related to the State Water Infrastructure Grant and related general fund budget amendments. You know, Michael, who's going to do that one for I'll take it. Near, near the mayor one will but um, <clears throat> this budget amendment is for is part of and and, con and contract related to the budget amendment is for an agreement between us and the consolidated utility district for a grant um, and it's going to be a pass through there is a match however they are covering all match portion so this ends up being a pass through for us um, the total dollar amount of that grant is five million five hundred seventy nine thousand and sixty four dollars um, so that, that amount is a little up from what it was when it was previously um, presented to y'all. Um, and they will be covering, like I said, all of the match will be funded by them. And some of this work has already been started on their end. So um, any questions? I'll just say this is, this is a three-part item. It's the budget amendment, the agreement with CUD, and the grant contract with the state. So any motion we make would be to cover, to all, cover three all, of those. all three of those, right. That's correct. Basically, this grant uh, 
we're, we're funding it. It's pass through money for us, and then yes. they're paying paying us back for it. Is that the way that's working? Right. We're just passing the money on to them. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Any questions from the committee, Commissioner Goods? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just for clarification, uh, it says grant awarded to the county to provide safe, portable water. What ex what exactly is portable water? Potable. Potable. It's drinkable water. It's it's potable, P O T A B L E, and it's, it's drinkable. Okay. We pronounce it different over at Kitchell, so. <laughs> the director of CUD is here if you want further clarification. There you go. There you go. Any other questions? Did you get a motion to approve? You'll need one. You do now. And that covers all three of the items that Mark mentioned. So, okay. And that we do have a motion to we have a second. Mr. Piercy seconds. Any further discussion? Here none call roll mark. Commissioner Irvin? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Srino? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Since uh, we do have a representative from CUD here, would you like to make a comment, sir? That's, a, that's up to you. Sure. Uh, <laughs> Good evening, commissioners, uh, and thank you for passing that. I just wanted to uh, introduce myself, Roger Goodson. I'm the general manager, been there about a year and a half now. I, I've seen quite a few of you around, but some of you I haven't, so wanted to take the opportunity. want to thank you for passing this. Uh, this is a great opportunity uh, to reinvest and install water mains where we don't have water mains right now and you know our whole goal is to get water to every uh, resident in the county uh, that's been the goal since it started next year we'll be celebrating 55 years that we've been uh, uh, consolidated uh, basically so uh, looking forward to having a few uh, festivals and, and open houses. Uh, I invite any of you, if you wanna come out and see the plant, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, you know, we finished our expansion last year. Uh, it's able to do 32 million gallons now. So uh, it's a state of the art, it's beautiful. And uh, nothing goes back to the river or anything, it just gets recycled. So uh, it's uh, one of the best. So. Uh, we'll probably have an open house sometime next year uh, in, in part with the anniversary and uh, uh, I look forward to uh, getting to know all of you guys. Any questions? If I could ask what percentage, you said not quite 100%, what percentage are we at and where, what's the plan I guess? For the, dis, for the county? Or, for, um, so currently we've got over 1,700 miles of water main throughout the county. Uh, we have probably, uh, last we checked, I think there's about 16 uh, miles left that do not have water. Uh, and that's a lot of that is due to elevations and, and the possibility of, of trying to get it there through easements and, and things like that. So uh, our goal is to get it all there and uh, you know, that's what part of this will fund that uh, as well as continuing to uh, you know, increase fire flows and, and things about that. Because when we first started, you know, we were just trying to run two inch mains and get water out there. And now we're trying to get fire flows and as the county has grown. So that's why we're continu continually investing. Uh, and that's what these, these grant funds will go towards. So you're welcome. Thanks, Thanks sir. Thank you. Okay, our next item is number nine, general fund budget amendment for OIT. Committee. This is a transfer of $21,000 from the unassigned fund balance to the data processes services budget to cover the moving of the IDF on the first floor of 20 North. Uh, that was the one that was having water intrusion uh, and we had to move that. The uh, maintenance's budget, I think y'all had already, y'all have already approved that dollar amount, but this was the IT piece of that. Uh, we had to move our 
the entire racks for the first floor had to be moved to that location. So, so that's what this is represents. Who's our property management rep? Yeah, it was it was a couple several months ago, but yes, it was it went this went through and was approved as an emergency expenditure. So we just spent it out of our budget and then to get reimbursed. Right. Uh, I, I remember funding the so, several of the maintenance problems, but I don't remember what actually caused this leak. And was that from construction, this construction process, or was that the roof? Go Condensation. Yeah, this, this was condensation around the pipes for the entire building, so the, the HVAC, uh, and again, I'm the IT guy, so I'm explaining somebody else's uh, deal here, but so I'll do the best I can, but my understanding is that the condensation between the conditioned air and the unconditioned air was meeting and then running back down the main pipes for the building, coming down the chase. And this IDF was at the base of those pipes, so it was like raining constantly on top, and the, it was a concrete room, and the, the concrete was totally saturated and was dripping through um, onto our equipment. So we had umbrellas uh, on, and plastic covering so pretty expensive stuff. So. Mr. Chairman, I believe what we found when that, when that building was renovated for the county purposes, the contractor went in there and did some, um, ostensibly some upgrades to the HVAC when in fact they uh, unintentionally made things worse and they created a condensation issue that then created this issue. So um, we didn't find out about it until the summer when we have all that heat and humidity. And so this is a result of that. So I believe this is what you're talking about because I know that Adam Dodd was trying to address this thing directly. So I believe that's what this is. But uh, there's no liability from this contractor? I don't believe so. <coughs> Well, you've heard the man. We've got a bill out there that's waiting to be paid. Uh, do I hear a motion? Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion, Commissioner Johnson. Second. Second, Commissioner Gooch. Any further discussion? Call roll, please. Commissioner Urban? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Serino? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, committee. Thank you, Cody. Thank you. All right, next is item 10, general fund budget amendments and transfers for the jail. Good evening. To recognize, this amendment is to recognize the revenue and expenditures for the financial year of 2021 Bureau of Justice Assistance State Criminal Aliens Assistant Grant Award. It's gonna be used for the construction and building improvements in the detention center. The application fee for the Justice Benefit Incorporated is estimated around $9,865. We're asking to accept the, um, the grant $61,068 and then asking $9,865 from unassigned fund balance. And placing the $9,865 into our other contracted services and placing the $61,068 into our jail improvement line item. <coughs> Since this is coming out of undesignated fund balance, let's keep it separate from the rest of them, if that's okay with the committee. Yes, sir. Any questions for Mr. Spence? My understanding is that this grant we approved and we knew that it had a match to it, and this is the match that we have, the commission has approved. So basically, we're, we're paying what we said we'd do here. So I'll entertain a motion. I so move. Mr. Serino. Second. Johnson seconds. Any further discussion? Call roll, please. Mr. Urban? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Piercy? Yes. Mr. Serino? Yes. Mr. Gooch? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. P? Yes. Motion carries. Please continue. The next amendment says to move some funds in the jail um, budget is to provide funds for overtime needed for employees covering vacant positions and to provide funds for repair and maintenance of the building and to provide funds for the kitchen equipment to buy new equipment. We're asking to take $360,000 out of the guard's salary 
and placed it into our overtime line item. Uh, 70,000 from our other supplies and equipment, placing 20,000 into our repair and maintenance of the building and 50,000 of that in our kitchen equipment. I said this, all these transfers are coming out of line items uh, that you've already got the money for. So yes, sir, that's no correct. Money here. That's correct. Okay, any other questions from the committee? Not will entertain the motion. Motion to approve. Commissioner Piercy moves to approve. Second, Commissioner Irving. Any further discussion? Call roll, please. Mr. Irvin? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Serena? Yes. Mr. Gooch? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. P? Yes. Motion carries. We have a, uh, a grant request. We're requesting to apply for the financial year 22 state criminal aliens um, grant. It requires no matching. Requesting for the mayor to accept the grant program funding should it be awarded. This would also include working with Justice Benefits Incorporated as we did on the previous one. Yes, to, sir, uh, to accumulate these costs for us to apply for this grant. Yeah. Correct. And it, once you apply, if you get it, then you'd be coming back to us, is that correct? Yes, sir, that's correct. Okay, so this is, uh, would be a motion to allow them to apply for the grant. Do I hear a motion? Commissioner How Harris? How much money are we paying right now for this? How much money is coming let's, out of let's our Let's get budget? a second first before we get into discussion. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Please continue. I apologize. No, it's, you're fine. How much money is, is for us to incarcerate undocumented criminals? How much is that costing the county right now before this grant? Is there a number? No, sir, no. There's no number? There's no number. Okay. Got a question. Uh, Mayor. Chief Spence. Yes, sir. Are, do we know what constraints will this grant, by accepting it potentially, put on the county with how this money can be used in dealing with undocumented aliens? The, the money's only allotted for certain items to, to use in the jail when we receive the money. It, did that answer your first questions? I don't think so. Are there, is there specific ways that this money can be spent in the jail then for this express purpose? Yeah, yes, sir, for the jail improvements and um, programs and so forth. Okay, thank yes. you. Any further questions? We have a motion, a second, Commissioner Gooch. Well, just a question for, I guess, for my benefit. At, at any given time, how many criminal illegal aliens do we have? I, I don't, ha I don't have that number with me. And okay. when they come in, they 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 are made bond or the um, they're released to uh, ICE if they come pick them up. Okay, you. S to be clear, so. They're arrested and come in. Yes. And they're undocumented. Yes, sir. And so how do they make bond? If, if they're eligible to make bond, they're, they're allowed to make bond, but most of the time the ICE comes and picks them up. If the ICE comes and picks them up. Yes. Okay. My apologies, Chief. Does the Sheriff's Department keep records on the number of detainees that are undocumented aliens? Yes, sir. The um, Bureau of Justice, that's how they, they, they get our data from the jail to determine how much money they allot us each okay. year. Okay. So in a given period of time, we would know the number of illegal aliens, undocumented aliens that were arrested in Rutherford County, correct? Yes, sir. That's correct. And so it's based on that number that in part, we would be eligible for before this grant, correct? That's correct. I guess what I'm wanting to know, and you may not be able to answer this, so this, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, yes, so sir. please. But I guess what I'm wanting to know, given the current climate, I'm wanting to know if, because this is a federal grant. Yes, sir. I'm wondering if there are particular stipulations that are going to be imposed on the Sheriff's Department through Rutherford County and the state and how we use this money that would facilitate the lack of a f policy that currently the federal government has regarding the enforcement of our borders. Did you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. 
Do you, do you, can you give me an answer to that? Honestly, no, sir. Thank you for your honesty. But I can't, but, but I can't bring the, uh, the numbers back to you, uh, if pull the numbers they've got from last year's grant, and, if they would help. And let me say, I do not want my line of questioning to at all to change or persuade this committee to vote in the affirmative on this request because it doesn't obligate the county. I think it would be a good idea we can, if we move forward both in the application for the grant and then at, a, at the appropriate time determined if we actually wanted the grant. We could do that, could we not, Chief Smith? That, that's correct. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. I want, to I want to kind of piggyback off Commissioner Gooch just for my benefit so I know. So you arrest an undocumented uh, alien. Yes, sir. All right. How quick does ICE come to get him? I believe they're, they're within five days is their limit. I, I might be wrong. So while we are housing them, that's an expense that we're paying, correct? Y yes, sir. Okay, that's why I was asking that question is what is that amount? Yes, sir. Because I understand the grant because the grant would help towards that. Would, would I, is that correct? Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, so I'm just saying, do you have a number as to how much you're costing us right now? I think it's $65 a day for a regular inmate to be housed a day. The, the like, cost. A day like a normal? Y yes, 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 sir. Okay. It, it, sure, come on up to, yeah. Yes. Yeah, come on up so we, we got you on a speaker here. The money that we're receiving is in arrears. The money has already been spent. So what this is doing is paying us back for what we have spent. Uh, right now, I have no foreign born in our jail. Uh, but when we do, then of course that is kept up with, and then at the end of the year, then we submit for this grant to be paid back. Uh, as the chief has said, we're paying about $65 a day for per inmate uh, is what it's costing us, and uh, this is the same cost for them. It's just it's just an inmate, so they they do not have any more expense than what we do just a regular inmate. So if that, this grant will it give you more money, so. You it's, don't it's have to go in arrears? It's paying us back for what we've already spent. That's all it covers, though, yes. right? Okay. This, this money, I guess you can look at it this way, this money has been submitted for what we have done last year. So we've already spent the money. All we're trying to do is get the grant to get the money back for, for money already spent, if that makes any sense. It makes a lot of sense. Oh, okay. I'm just, I just know if ICE takes up to five days, that's we got to house them for five days. That's correct. Now, if they don't come pick them up and we don't have anything or they bond out, then they're gone. So, yeah, I, I, does that clarify Chair. or help? Yeah, hang on a minute, Mayor. Yeah, yeah Chair Fitzhugh, thank you for that clarification. If this is a reimbursement for money already spent, that's an entirely different matter. Typically, grants are for expenditure going forward, and I didn't understand this was a reimbursement. So. Uh, that changes things. Yeah, the just problem, a bit. Yeah, of course, we have no way. And it is a reimbursement, correct? That's correct. We okay. have no way of knowing ahead of time how many undocumented you know, that we will have. So it's an arrears type thing. Money's already spent, so this gives us an opportunity to reimburse ourselves for that. Thank you, sir. I guess in answer to your other question, of course, we don't know future what legislation may come down the pike. Uh, if it does, then of course we're in a position we don't have to ask for this grant. So if they put stipulations on it to the point where it's detrimental to us, we won't ask for it. Thank you. Okay. Well, and we'll be able to make that decision too. And before you leave, if I'm not mistaken, we've had something similar to this in the past. I know that there have been other bills that we had picked up. I think Nashville actually started it and we copycatted them several years ago. It, it, has there been a similar grant to this out there? That yes, we've had. Well, for this, is something we've asked for every year. Yes, it's every uh, year. It, it, well, if that's the same thing that you're talking about. That's that's yes, basically sir. what I'm yes. asking. I, I think we've done this in the well, past, so we. It's not the first time we've asked for this. That's correct. All right. I might, I might mention too, Sheriff, that the the last budget amendment y'all voted on, that, that was the sixty-one thousand and the nine thousand dollars. We we essentially paid nine thousand dollars to Justice Benefits to scour the data to get us as much as we could. So they netted us $50,000 that, that the Rutherford County taxpayers would have to pick up otherwise. And uh, before we started working with Justice Benefits, we, we used to get about six or $7,000 a year when we were massaging the data. And this company has, I, I guess, has, has gotten a kind of in on the process and they figured out how to do it and scour that data to get as much as they can. And, 
it's jumped up to uh, fifty, sixty thousand dollars every year, pretty much. Any further questions, Commissioner Johnson? This may be a stupid question, but is there any penalty involved for them being in arrears for uh, paying back what they owe to us? There should be. <laughs> I feel fortunate that we're even being reimbursed. I think uh, what they do, they do the year before, do the report, and then we get the check the following year. It's a year behind, and we get the check. Yeah. We, this is not unsimilar, and, and I guess it's talk about reimbursement. This is a higher reimbursement rate than what we get from the state. It costs us $65 to house a state inmate right now. We're only reimbursed at $39. So, um, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make the motion to we've, approve. We've got, we've got a motion. Oh, we do? We've got All a right. motion and a second for this. Just, I wanted to clarify who made the motion because I did not hear that. Mr. So. Harris made the motion okay. and I believe Serino said Serino it. Serino Okay. Gotcha. Any further questions? Call roll, please. Commissioner Urban? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Serino? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes, motion carries. Okay, all right. Okay, ready for item 12, drug fund and special purpose fund budget amendment. And you're gonna cover that, okay, go ahead. So in the previous year, we, we received money from cases worked with the DEA and other federal agencies. That money is supposed to be put in our special purpose fund 121. This money was um, accidentally put in fund 122. So we are moving, this budget amendment covers moving that money from fund 122 to fund 121. That was a total of $175,569. So basically you're fixing a bookkeeping error. Correct. Any further questions from the committee? If not, I'd entertain a motion. This is just a housekeeping measure, isn't it? That's correct. It's no new money. It's just moving from one fund to the other. Okay. Motion to approve. I have a motion. Second, Commissioner Irving. Any further questions? Call roll. Commissioner Irvin? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Pearson? Yes. Commissioner Serino? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item 13, Education Capital Projects Fund Budget Amendments. There's Dr. Sullivan, our director. Afternoon, commissioners, mayor. So we have two before you. Um, first one, we have Fund 177, Capital Projects Rebudgeting Prior Year Encumbrances. Um, this is from Smyrna High School. This is a donation from Smyrna High, or for Smyrna High School for their turf field. The previous board uh, put this funding into 177, and so the school needs the permission to be able to spend the money that was donated to them. So this is something you were going to see several times over the next couple months come before you. So this first one, this, amend this amendment budgets $188,963 from 34,685 committed for capital projects fund balance to education capital projects 99,100, 399 other contracted services to cover amended change orders and future expenditure items regarding Smyrna High School's football turf. Uh, if I don't hear an objection from the committee, let's go ahead and pick up the second one also. Sounds great. All right, the second is Fund 177 Capital Projects Budget Amendment. This amendment budgets $1.6 million from 34,685 committed for capital projects fund balance to educational capital projects 99,100,732 building purchases to procure additional portables for classroom space. In addition, the attached 177 budget amendment spreadsheet shows amounts to be amended internally between projects. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. What, uh, where are these, uh, Portable's going. Yep. Five are going to Stewart's Creek Elementary School. At least one, if not two, to Stewart's Creek High School. Two to Blackman Elementary School and one to Riverdale. Mr. Irvin, do you have a question? Um, well, we, we can stay on that thread briefly. Uh, so how many are there? Ten. Ten? Yep. Um, and how, forgive me, I don't know very much. Can you give us a little background? Are these the size of the building? Yes, yeah, so these will all the be process, double. How the process works to 
come up with this is what we think we need and, yes you know and this is how we decide on it and mm -hmm. you know things like that. so we have over 160 portables right now in our district um, we as you know and you're going to hear much more in the future i gave you guys an enrollment report last time these are some of our most overcrowded schools. Stewart's Creek Elementary has a capacity of just over 1,000 and they're sitting at 1290. Um, we have four portables right there right now um, and we're adding 100 students a year there. And so they are going to get five double wides, which technically gives us 10 classrooms to hopefully be able to move some classrooms that are in our closet spaces right now into some portables. The other ones that we are looking at, Riverdale High School, we rezoned from Rockville High School last year because we have 10 portables in front of Rockville High School. We rezoned students over to Riverdale and allowed a grandfathering option. And so those students who were grandfathered have now been able, as we move forward, Riverdale is now over 2,100. So they will have some. Stewart's Creek High School is the fourth largest high school in the state of Tennessee now. So they are over 2,400 students and they are growing just like Stewart's Creek Elementary School is. Blackman Elementary School is an area that we may or may not need the one to two portables. That one kind of depends on what their enrollment does. We share that with the city schools. That's a dual zoned. So depending on who shows up between Scales, Case and Lane, Overall Creek, Blackman Elementary shifts that zone just a little bit every single year. Um, if I'm a guessing person, I guess that one may end up at Stewart's Creek High School, not Blackman Elementary. Just depends on where the numbers show. Okay, so these are $160,000. Correct. Okay, and how many square how many square foot are each of I don't know that one off the top of my head. I don't. I can bring that back next time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I'd be curious in terms of, you know, just the square footage cost. Yeah. Yeah. Cost per square foot. Yeah. And, and one those lines. One thing that's not on here, we will go and something our board has asked is to build awnings on these. Um, we have not built awnings in the past, so if there's weather, then students just get wet. And so we're going to build awnings on these. It'll come out of our own maintenance budget. I don't love it. I, I don't love purchasing portables. Some of the portables I went to in this county are still being used, but it's where we are, unfortunately. So how long are they expected to last? What's the, what's the warranty, so to speak, on a portable? I would love to tell you 10 years, but we are now replacing roofs on some of our portables for the third time. So we have some that are 40 years old. Um, we have one right now that I would love to move from Rockville Elementary School because it's sitting there and we'd be, be able to use it. I'm not sure if we move it, we'll be able to use it. Does this cover us for the upcoming year or the current? It'll cover us for next year, hopefully. This is, we do not have any buildings on tap to open next school year. And so we are in a lull to, even though we added 2,200 students, we're not opening a building next year. Um, we're in the middle of a massive rezoning study. And so this buys us time because we're not opening next year. Chairman Pro Tem Gooch. Well, we had commented during the health and ed meeting that uh, when we first started out, Robert, on the commission, that the portables were 40,000. And now we're looking at 1.6 million. Uh, but uh, Health and Ed found everything to be appropriate, and so my motion is to approve. Have a motion. Uh, let me get a second, then Commissioner Harris has got a comment. I hear a second. I'll second. Second. Okay, Commissioner Harris, you're recognized. Okay, two schools that I'm interested in. Uh, Stewart's Creek, how many portables we got right now? Four portables there, and I believe three of them are doubles and one's a single, so I'd have to check my math, but somewhere between four and seven actual classrooms. Okay, and then how many is at Rockville? High school? Yes. 10. So we've already got 10 in that so school. So 20, So we're yes. over where we are in that one. Yes. Okay, my last one is Blackman. How many we got there? 11, I believe. 11? I believe it's 11. We're gonna get a little bit of space back at Stewart's Creek Elementary with the MedPoint Clinic. We should be able to put one, at least one and a half classrooms where the MedPoint Clinic is after January 1st. I know that's a sore subject, but that's an area that we need space in. And so, that's where we are. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Irvin. Yeah, could you provide just some background in, in, on this turf thing? Yeah. In other words, there was a third yes. party, or where did the money come from? Yeah, so yeah, um, Smyrna Ready it? Mix donated over a million dollars for turf for Smyrna High School. Um, they put that money instead of going into the school fund, we moved that into 177. That's not the way we will do it in the future, and that's not the way we've done it in the past. Um, 
the donor has gone through and given a letter to the school saying they can use it as they see fit for the rest of their facilities that they need. However, that money is in our 177 fund, so we come before you for approval for their money that they donated. And then they get to decide what happens to the rest of it? Yes, these oh. are for soccer goals, for example. Um, Michael, did I handle? Does that sound about right? <laughs> the future, once the project was done, they donated it for the turf field. So let's say there was 300,000 left over. I, I don't know the dollar amount exactly left over, but somewhere around there. It just has to be spent in accordance with the donor's uh, restrictions. You know, if, if the school board ever felt those restrictions were unreasonable, um, then they could, you know, send that money back to the donor. But in this case, it sounds like they feel this money is reasonable, and, and so it'll be spent on various sports-related projects at Smyrna High School. I don't intend on us sending this back to Smyrna Ready Mix, and I don't think the school would want us to do that either. <laughs> well, I, I'm still puzzled about this 160000 per for a double wide, basically. Is that, I don't know if that's, do you, do you all go out there and actually do an analysis? Yeah, we bid them out, so, so we bid them out. Let me add, we, we rented or leased 20 portables right before I came here, um, and that was over two point something million dollars. Um, and those portables that we had had, had to be certain, uh, certain compliance within those portables. It had to have sinks, utility sinks, toilets that were a certain height, water fountains with certain things in there. I would assume these come with that. Also the setup, you know, when you're putting a portable, it's usually like right over a sidewalk. And so that cost to us had the setup included, I would assume this does as well. Right. So ours came from Georgia at that time. So this included delivery setup and everything. And so it did get um, rather expensive when you're hooking up temporary electric and then running um, internet, uh, different things like that out there. Yeah, we don't love it. We just ride a room for where our kids can go. Um, I'd much rather them, I'd much rather them be in that than be as overcrowded as they are in closets right now. Yeah, it's a hard, it's a hard pill for all of us to swallow, myself included. It's hard for me when I go look. I know that um, one school that I go to, it's my former music portable, the best we can track when I was at Walter Hill in second grade is still being used. So it's, it's a hard pill to swallow. Thank you. When uh, Commissioner Goots and Johnson and I came on, uh, elementary school was costing us about $12 million. So you can see the, yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> any, any further discussion or questions for our, our school director? We've got a motion and second. Call roll, please. Commissioner Irvin? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Srinya? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes, motion carries. Thank, Thank you, you Commissioner. Director. All right, next item 14, application for Walmart local community grant for adult probation. Thumbs? Welcome. Good evening. Um, we would like permission to apply for the local Walmart uh, grant for our outreach program that we have in-house, the Olive Branch, which is a food pantry. There are several different areas of funding, one of which is to assist in low-income families and individuals uh, with meals and snacks. So we would like the permission to apply for that grant is the Euro Match grant with a minimum award of 250, maxing out at $5,000. Okay, what committee saw, saw this before? Is this the first committee you've come to? Uh, public safety. Public safety. Did it pass uh, full committee, or do you recall? It did. It did, okay. And this is a no match grant, or maybe? It okay. is, it's a zero match. Any other questions? Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. Second. And a second. Any questions? All roll, please. Commissioner Irvin? Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Serena? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 15, uh, general fund budget amendment for drug court. Michael, are you going to do that one? 
So this, this next grant is for recovery court. Um, it is a no match grant and it is an increase to the original grant that was already approved. However, I do wanna point out as part of this grant application, uh, we currently right now have two part-time peer support specialists. Uh, as part of this grant application, recovery court is wanting to expand those to two full-time positions. So this grant would kick in 25% of those positions and so this grant would require us in the future to kick in an, an additional 25% um, for those two positions to make them full time. So this is not a, this is a no match grant. However, um, if we did that future budget years, it would require us now that dollar amount is small, but I just wanted to uh, disclose that. So, so I'm clear on this or mayor you want to. We're paying uh, for two part-time people now. Correct. And what they're wanting to do is take 25%, uh, or, or it would cost 25%, take that money from the grant to make those two part-time, full-time for the rest of this year. Correct. But next fiscal year, our next budget, then we would have to pick up that 50%. No, no, we would have to pick up that 25%. Okay, because you're saying that grant would continue yes. on. This grant is, Three, How long though? Three years three is years. my understanding. So after three years, we would pick up. After three years, you'd have to pick up any position that's funded if, if the commission wanted to continue these positions. Or we could turn it down. Mayor. Yeah, Th and those are excellent questions, Chairman. I appreciate it. Uh, I wanna, would like to remind the committee that of all the things that um, we do that where we're looking for a positive return on investment, not just on the bottom line, but in lives, recovery court is probably the most productive area for this body to consider. Currently, according to Ms. Ricks, <clears throat> this was about a month ago, we had 140 people on the waiting list to get through recovery court, the four different recovery courts. Uh, and I believe Sheriff Fitzhugh could comment on this as well. The ROI, with somebody coming through recovery court and being on the program as opposed to being incarcerated, it's about 10 to one. It's, fun, it's a phenomenal financial investment for this community, not only in dollars and cents, but in saved lives. Uh, Chairman Harris can speak to this better than I can, but we also have an opioid epidemic, uh, and, um, epidemic going on that's creating a burden on the recovery courts. So what these grants es essentially do is they provide the human resources for these people to get off, get out of incarceration, get into recovery court, and uh, provide us that return on investment, not just in dollars, but in human lives. And I will tell you, uh, the mayor's office is gonna come forward in budget time <clears throat> with hopefully a, a budget that will be approved by this body for the expansion of a recovery court at its current location so that we can further invest in this community through the recovery court. So this, this, the mayor's office is fully behind this grant and any other grant that uh, gets men and women out of incarceration and gives them a second chance. And I hope you'll approve this grant request. Thank you. Got a question, sir. <clears throat> We've had this conversation about the building, me and you. Is any of these funds available to put in uh, anything that we try to do to to increase the size of the recovery court? So is your, uh, let me let me better understand your question, Commissioner. Are you, are you saying are any of these grant funds available for the ex physical expansion? No, sir. This is just for the expansion of those human resources necessary to provide those services. So what we will have to do as a body is we will have to internally provide the physical expansion necessary for those resources to, to work. Okay, and I know you've been working on this. Yes, so, sir, I have. Um, and we've had conversations about it. Uh, is there a time limit on for us to use this grant money? Is it a 12 month or three years? Yes, it expires. Okay, so we got time then to, to expand before. Almost, almost certainly, but, and, and I appreciate the question, but again, our, waiting list for recovery court is growing monthly. And so there's an opportunity, we, we need to work in an expedited fashion, in my opinion, on getting that number down to a more manageable level. Again, there's a, and, and I believe, again, I hate to keep calling on Sheriff Fitzhugh, but the fact of the matter is, is this has got a significant financial component to the county, as well as a human life component. And you rarely find a greater opportunity for government to do something truly 
notable as this. And so that's why I'm excited about moving forward on this. Yeah, we, we both know that for 140 backlog, we got to have more case managers. That's right. And we got to have more uh, counselors. That's right. And therapists. And we have so, more space and more space. Yes. And that's the biggest concern because one of the things I wanted to do with my committee on the opioid disburden is help you with uh, hiring more case managers or therapists. But there's nowhere to put them. So I'm really going to be doing nothing for you. Uh, it, it, with all due respect, Mr. Commissioner, that's what we're going to solve in this com coming budget year is a place to put those case managers so that we can alleviate this uh, crowding issue. We're, we were trying to do it within the existing budget year, but we're just a little, after talking with uh, Director Smith, we're just a little bit constrained, <coughs> but we're working diligently even now on making sure that when we come to this body in May or June with that proposal, you'll have something that you can, um, vote in the affirmative on. That's our goal. So we can go ahead and start this grant process now. It's, I would say let's start it now and with the expectation that we're going to have the expansion available when those grants uh, are, can be made ready, those grant funds. Any further questions or discussion, Mr. Irvin? I think it's a great effort. What's, but, but I want to just double check. What's the ongoing cost? I heard this ongoing cost beyond this year into more years. What, do we have a sense or no? So, so right now, this grant would fund, this additional money for this grant would fund two full-time reentry re -entry counselors, one full-time reentry case manager, and would help make two full-time peer support specialists full-time. After three years, this body would have to decide whether to pick up all of that cost or go a different direction. So after 630 of 2025, this grant will cover that until then. But after that, that cost is going to be around, you know, the $250,000 mark, give or take what, you know, what y'all do with salaries and benefits and things like that. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. But again, just as the mayor was saying, you've got to offset those costs for actual costs that you'd have for incarceration. You know, you're talking, what, $60 a day? Right, I was just that. trying to, yeah. Uh, Sheriff. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Mr. Chairman, if we could get Sheriff Fitzhugh to speak. Please. Uh, I think that would be great. On the, the record, speak. thank you. What the mayor is talking about is an excellent program and uh, one that we hardly endorse. If you look at what they're trying to do in the recovery courts is to stop whatever vice that they've got. Uh, they've been very successful at that. And of course, what we're seeing too is our recidivism rate. Uh, we were running around 47%. Uh, we're down to around 42% now. And of course, part of that is because of the recovery courts and, and the work that they're doing. So what we're looking at is you expending the dollars now for recovery courts, but on the other side of that, then the recidivism, you're, you're stopping people coming back over and over and over again uh, into our facility. Uh, right now, 100% of the females that I've got incarcerated are on some type of psychotic drug because of drugs, uh, so being treated. 67% of my male population uh, is on that because of, mostly because of drug, of drug situation. Uh, so I, I'm a hearty uh, supporter of the recovery courts. So they do a great work. And I think now we're seeing some of it. We're going to see even greater in the future as far as people doing a return visit to our facility. That's our job is to get them healthy, get them out. The other part of that, too, is they become productive citizens and adding to the tax base because a lot of these people are getting good jobs. Uh, you go to the graduation and listen to the jobs that they're getting, so now they're adding to the tax rate. Uh, so I think it's a successful program all the way around. Mr. Johnson. I have a question for Michael. Uh, Michael, according to the, uh, this year, uh, is this $262,055, is that over a three-year period? Is that that's, each year? That's each year. That's just for this year. The, the budget amendment you see now is just for this budget year. Okay, so th this grant will be good till 2025, June 2025. Yes. And then, Mayor, we'll have to be looking at picking up uh, the space farm and, and, and the cost of it. Yeah, if, and if I could say something on that, potentially we would, but
But I, I'm going to tell you, of all the departments that we have, this department has a lot more opportunities for state and federal grants as much as any department we have. It really does. And I will never make a prediction about what state or federal government would do. <laughs> Having been in state government for a little while, I just won't do that. But I can tell you the, the opportunities with our, with our grant people is, are great. And so I'm excited about what we can do. If we can just give them the facility to work in, I think we can get this rate down from 140 down to a very manageable level. I'm talking about the waiting list. So. I will say this, you've been there to the drug court. And, oh, yeah. And Chantel's been there so many times, they think he's been enrolled in it. <laughs> but that, that is money well spent for individuals. Uh, I support it wholeheartedly. Mr. Serino. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, I strongly support you know, the ideas, uh, the merits and the share. Every time, like Mr. Johnson said, you know, the, when we see when they graduate from the program, they already have job and so get ready to uh, start their own business and so on and so forth. That's so I'm proud, you know, to see that. Can I take that as a motion to approve this grant? So moved. Yeah. Hey, and I will make this <laughs> statement too, Mayor. Uh, the refreshments are not bad either, are they? Okay, I have a motion. Do I hear a second? Second, Commissioner Serino. Okay. We'll have a motion to second. Any further questions? Commissioner Irving, you know? Mr. Chairman, if I could, we're not talking about out of county people. We're talking about Rutherford County citizens, and that, that needs to be emphasized that we're helping Rutherford County citizens. I think all of us, uh, I know as I've campaigned, uh, around, I'll run into people and, and they'll mention to me, you know, they've got family members that have gone through it and thank us for it. So there's, it's been effective and helped us. One more thing and then we'll move on with the vote, but I would be remiss if we didn't recognize and acknowledge uh, Judge Don Ash years ago starting this program. I mean, it was his vision that started this program and uh, we owe him a great debt of gratitude, so. Okay. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner also Perry. let me remind everybody, there is veterans court, there is a uh, drug court, and there's family court, and that's one of the things that we're looking at too, is uh, we're wanting to reestablish family court, juvenile family court. So there's a lot of these things that we can do to help the community on this, and, and drug court is so effective. And I mean, y'all know that I deal with this on a daily basis. So getting that space, that the mayor gets that space, then we have the ability to, to really increase this with the monies that we have coming in. So there's my two cents. Okay, any further discussion? Call roll, Mark. Commissioner Irvin? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Serino? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes, motion carries. Now we're up to, I think, item 16. We're gonna pull item number 16. We're still waiting on a contracts for that, if that's okay. All right, we're pulling 16. We'll look forward to seeing that again, I guess. <laughs> All right, 17 is an application for community development block grant addressing food insecurity program. Item 17, who's gonna do that one? All right. So we're asking permission to apply for that. Um, we did have a, for this grant for food insecurity programs, we did have a uh, Teams meeting or a Zoom meeting the other day with several local nonprofits um, within the county. This would be a pass through uh, through the county to these local nonprofits for them to, <coughs> for them to buy eligible expenditures like refrigerators, freezers, ovens, shelving um, to provide food to low income families. Um, there was quite a bit of interest in that meeting from some of the local nonprofits um, if this grant were to be awarded and we were successful, that, that money would go directly here to Rutherford County nonprofits um, in Rutherford County. Okay, the maximum would be 500,000 for us, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Any discussion or questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. And, and let me add, there is a zero match from us. It would just be a pass through from us th to, to those nonprofits. 
Motion to approve. There were a motion, Commissioner Johnson. Second, Commissioner Harris. Any further discussion? Call roll, please. Commissioner Irvin? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Serino? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes, motion carries. Item 18, application for solid waste infrastructure recycling grant. I'll take that one. Mayor? Um, this is a result of having a great grant coordinator. Uh, and timing, <clears throat> timing isn't everything. Timing is the only thing, and this is an example. So while we have been undertaking uh, trying to determine who is going to do the engineering for our solid transfer station, um, the grant, our grant coordinator found this federal grant that she advised that it would be in our interest to apply for. The total federal grant is $40 million. The total amount available to us potentially would be anywhere from 500000 to $4 million. Um, and we're, what we're asking for is to apply for the grant to find out what the stipulations are in the grant. It doesn't obligate us, uh, but it's a great opportunity for us to defray some of the potentially some of the cross costs associated with the transfer station that this body is pursuing in the coming year. Well, it would be just for a transfer station or would there be well, other it, options it, there too? It, yeah, there are other opportunities there what, that we're trying to get a more, def, more definition of what this entails. It's obviously to, uh, it directly goes for diverting waste from the landfill, which is what we're trying to do with the transfer station. What we need to do is to find out to what extent a transfer station could be a part of that solution for diversion, but we won't know until we make some kind of application. Again, the application doesn't obligate us, but it does help us better understand what qualifies us to submit an application. Okay, you've heard the request. Uh, questions, Commissioner Piercy? Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Second, Commissioner Irving. Any further discussion, Commissioner no. Harris? Is this a federal or state? Federal. Okay, to my understanding, uh, Mayor, in conversations I had with Representative Terry, that there might be some state money that can be applied to go towards our uh, transfer station. Have you had any conversation with him on that? or? I'm aware that the state uh, issued a grant through the Solid Waste, our Solid Waste Regional Board for $2.5 million. Uh, to the solid waste board, if that's what you're referring to. Um, and I don't know the particulars of that particular grant because when it was issued, I hadn't assumed office yet. And I know that it's sitting somewhere and it's our full intention to find out if some or all that money could be used towards our transfer station. Uh, if not, then yes, uh, to your question, we will pursue all avenues available, both state and federal, to defray the costs of the construction of this transfer station through grants. Thank you. You're welcome. As far as we know, there wouldn't be any strings. I'm sorry? As far as we know, there would not be any strings to the application. We're just trying to basically apply. That is correct. And find out what's available and what the strings, if any, are. That's exactly correct. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All roll, please. Commissioner Irvin? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Serino? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Item 19, discussion of the Goldstein Building Funding. <clears throat> I don't know if uh, Mr. Vaught wants to come uh, up. <laughs> You're invited. I will, I will start us off and, and, and kind of say how we got back here. Originally, this body, uh, before my time, approved some design uh, money for the potential renovation of the Goldstein Building. Um, now there has been um, some talk from the PBA about analyzing some structural support over at Civic Plaza and at our property assessor and county clerk building. Um, so in that realm, they would need permission from this body to to analyze the structures of those buildings about additions there. That cost is approximately $68,064. Um, so that's that's where we stand from, from my end on the budget side. Yes, we took uh, under direction from y'all to expand, I guess, um, our 
anal I guess the analytics of trying to figure out what is the best value for the county uh, looking at Goldstein's and then also looking at the opportunity to expand the footprint um, at the clerk's office in the city plaza and and both those recommendations came I, I think the committee speaking for the committee everybody on the committee uh, was more than than apt to do that but we were we were a little concerned we approved uh, both of the expenditures subject to funding and I think that was one thing I wanted we wanted to I wanted to get clear direction from budget from the full commission the, the, the money that's been allocated to us to study Goldstein's, is it okay to spend part of that money also studying the other two opportunities? And so we were just looking a little for some direction. Uh, and the second thing is I had to I understand that I needed, we needed to come back and talk about funding for the next two public safety buildings. So I thought I'm gonna kill two birds with one stone with you gentlemen tonight. So that, that was it. And if y'all had any questions about Goldstein's, but just wanting to make sure that we were under the correct uh, direction from from this body or from the entire commission. Oh, uh, Mayor, Mr. Vaughn, uh, real quick, why a point of process, maybe of order? Why is this request coming here before it goes to property management, and would it go to property management before it came here? Timing. The time. It, it, it was a timing issue. Yes. In regard to timing, in regards to what? Because we had missed property management, my understanding. Okay. That was the only reason. We, we met last Thursday night, and so uh, the budget director was sitting in our meeting and said that this meeting was tonight, so not trying to bypass. No, 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 no. I, I, okay. that, that, I, I was just trying to get some clarity as to our process. Um, the other question I have is if we were to undertake these engineering studies at the plaza and over at uh, the clerk's building, I forgot the name of it, forgive right. me, um, there's a lifespan for those engineering studies to be applicable in any construction process. What would that be? And the reason I'm asking is, is we're expanding uh, clerk's capabilities with one stop and that hasn't even, we haven't even finished building that yet, and yet now we're in undertaking a study of that facility over there, ostensibly to relieve crowding that she has when we haven't opened one stop yet. Does that make sense? And I'm going, if we do a st engineering study, how long will that engineering last? Engineering study last, do you have any idea? Mr. Mayor, you got way above my pay grade. I'm just a farmer and an auctioneer. I don't know. But we will, a uh, point of clarification from the engineer and from the architect, obviously when we report back with this information, I'm sure they will, I would be assured that there will be a time frame on that information, how long it would be good for. Now, I think that is the question, <laughs> and, I, and sidebar, I've got to say this to you gentlemen. Um, and ladies, and I don't want to be sexist here. I, I closed my eyes back there a while ago, and 24 years ago, I was sitting where Commissioner Piercy is now, and it, and it, the only insight I could give any one of y'all, and, and, and Commissioner Phillips was here at that same time too, the problems never change. We do, as a community, you do the best you can with the information you have at the time you can, I, I think, but it's, it's not gonna change. Uh, I, I sat back there and thought about, we were talking about funding for elementary schools. If I'm not mistaken, Jeff, Las Casas, Kittrell, Rockvale, and Stewartsboro cost us six million dollars a piece when we built those. And, and that was about 91, 90 or 91. The total project for Blackman, three campuses, including the uh, property itself was around 50 million bucks. Right, and, and, and so, you know, we lived through that, and only, I guess my only insight, and I don't, I don't know that this helps you, is that it's just gonna get more expensive all the time, and it's the same problem. We live in the land of milk and honey, and everybody wants to come here, I've decided. So anyway, that's just a little insight, but I do appreciate the hard work that you do. I don't think probably, 98% of our people in this county realize the, the hard numbers that, 
that you people have to look at month in and month out and the grants and the opportunities. But anyway, enough about that. I didn't come up here and blow smoke. I just came up here to try to answer some questions and tell you where we were. Any, any questions from committee? I've got a couple myself. Go ahead, Commissioner. Well, so what committee decided to propose engineering cert studies for the plaza? My understanding that came from property management to us. It was an expansion of the uh, the bid request. You you, you got y'all have given us my understanding. I may be speaking out of turn, and I'm gonna yield to you because we've been through it. We've been through a mayoral change, and we've also been through a budget director change. And I'm not sure I'm under everything correctly right now. Approximately $300,000 was allocated to us to study the Goldstein's building, the renovation of it, get everything yes. done, been yeah. working with the, the, Mr. Farley over there, making sure our timing was right for, for all concerned. As we have approached that, working with Bart Klein, who's the architect under direction by us to coordinate that effort. My understanding from the new commissioner or the new set of commissioners that came in, they wanted us to also look at those opportunities. Could we, would it be more efficient, cheaper, better to look, to go back and look at the, 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 the location down here well, on top of- What new commissioners? I'm sorry. What new commissioner? I, I don't know. It came. It came property from property management. management. That's my understanding. Well, I may be wrong. Okay. I, I, we just got a directive. I hope you're wrong because the last term, four years, eight years, I was on property management, and we never uh, showed an. Well, it was brought up, but we did not show an interest in the plaza. Where does come from? You're Mr. asking me where it came from. I, I, so originally, you, our, you were, you're correct. Agenda. You're correct, Commissioner Goods. There was 300 and something, a little over 300,000 that was approved to study the renovation of the Goldstein building. That's correct. P yes. And it, the other night, and I, this was before my time, I don't know how it came up. The other night it came up about studying the structural of the Civic Plaza and about the county clerk's building. And so that's when I told them they had to come back and get permission from this body to expand the scope of those funds. It, where did it come up? At PBA the other night. But not it, it was put management. on our agenda by somebody. Not, n not that I know the, of. I, I don't. I, I, I want to kind of go just nip this in the bud right now. All right. Okay. If that, that's my opinion. Is that we want to look at the Goldstein building? We look for. We studied that for years at property management. Right. Decided that that's the way we want it to go, and that we didn't want to destroy the plaza what green space we have downtown. I'm embarrassed. I, I don't know. I, I don't mean to embarrass it, you. I'm it, sorry it, if I'm being rude, no, no, but no, we no. need to nip this well, in the bud right well, now. It has shown up on our agenda the last three months to, to deal with it, and we got a cost estimate from the architect that's in charge of Goldstein's right now, Bart Klein to give us a cost estimate of what the engineering study would be on top of the plaza and also the second month it came back well if we're going to study the plaza study the top of the clerk's building too because when that building was built it was built to be a five-story building and so our directive it's just shown up on the agenda i assumed it came from property management it came from this body i don't know who stuck it on there okay I, I will, <laughs> that's the reason i said let's, i'm a let's, little let's, embarrassed can we unstick it <laughs> okay i, I want to interject and, and mr mayor i think you was trying to get to the point maybe that why are we studying the the clerk's office when we haven't even opened one stop yet that's Is exactly that what you my was point. trying to that's get that's exactly to? my point well I'm going to go ahead and, and recognize Commissioner Irving first, and then I'll make my comment. Excuse me. Yeah, we, we visited the Property Management Committee, visited Goldstein. Um, there was a, during that, the course, and, and I don't have notes with me, unfortunately. I mean, Jeff was there. He may have better notes even. 
Um, there was discussion uh, about, you know, just in the course of walking around, that there was, um, there had been a lot of money spent, a lot of analysis had been done. Uh, there were ideas that were tossed out, nothing definitive. There was uh, mention, I recall, of a study having been done of Goldstein, which is probably part of this 300, you know, but, but I recall Chairman McAdoo saying, we've been studying this thing a long time and, you know, poking and prodding and everything for a long time on this project. So in the course of that walkthrough, that tour, there were ideas tossed out. You know, what do we want to do with it? You know, do we want to keep it? Do we want to do something with it? And, and they were just ideas, as I understand it, being tossed out. The thing carried over into the meeting a little bit. And then um, there was one of the, or one or two of the ideas came up about, you know, well, we've got these other two possibilities. The engineering studies are out of date. So what do we do? And well, we could look at that too. Okay, I don't think, th there wasn't anything definite, it was just ideas, okay, at that point. And then um, it was mentioned that, that those engineering studies would be very expensive, okay, and they were based in part on uh, like earthquake or some kind of, you know, patterns that were problems, okay. So we, they would have to be updated and that's a very expensive process. And then, you know, a number of the ideas just kind of percolated. I have honestly no idea how it got onto the agenda. Well, okay. let, let me and make an interjection here. What he's basically asking us to do tonight is let them spend $68,064 to do an engineering study on a couple of buildings that we don't have a recommendation from Public Works to build. So my recommendation to this committee is to send this to Public Works, let them make a recommendation to us. We'll clear this up. Pro I'm Pro sorry. Property, Property management. management. Excuse me. Uh, but anyway, I didn't entertain a motion to do that at this time or, so, or more discussion. Either. Well, I can make that motion, but I want to say this. Um, you're right. McAdoo's right. We spent a lot of time, several, several years. And when I left property management, just this current term, is we had already settled that the Goldstein, we studied the Goldstein building and it was structurally sound and that there would need to be some renovations inside the building, but that was the most cost effective way. And now all of a sudden I'm hearing tearing up the plaza. And that's, so yes, I moved that we, we send I, no, my motion is that we don't send it to uh, property management and we just reject it. Okay, I have a motion just to reject this. I heard Sarah here a second. Any further discussion? Well, I, I'll make a motion after this to refer to property management because I know that that's probably the better place to have a discussion. I'll recognize the mayor for just a moment and then I'm just going to appoint a parliamentary order um, that may or may not be a proper motion based on the outcome of this motion and second that he has yet to be executed just a point of order. Right, I have to have a second before we even consider I think that. Johnson gave you a second. Did you give me a second? I didn't, I didn't say that. Okay, we do have a motion and a second to disregard this at this time. Any further discussion and there can be another motion afterwards. No further discussion, uh, call roll a yes, meaning that we will disregard this. Can we have a clarification which, what's yes and what's no? <laughs> if you vote in favor of this, then we stop this discussion. We, we will not authorize them to spend the money for the plaza or the uh, or renovating our clerk's office. Call roll, Mark. Commissioner Irvin? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Serino? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Okay, now, the floor. Uh, they cleared that up. Right. <laughs> 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 
We have got to. <laughs> That's the reason we were confused. We didn't know we had. We didn't think we had any money. <laughs> well, now you know you don't have the I money. Don't have so. Any money. Okay. But uh, are there any further discussion from any of the committee members? Do we want to give them any direction? Uh, Chairman Phillips, you recognize. The motion was to deny what we were talking about tonight. Well, the, but the, it could be brought back up under property management just because. Yes. Yes, it could be. If I may, yes, you're correct. But the motion was is we're not going to refer it back to property management, and we're going to reject it. So property management can bring it up themselves, but, but not because we're sending it to. Understood 100%. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure there was a referral piece to it. I think it was just rejecting the money, wasn't it? Well, it was to not send it back to property management and to reject it. Now, again, property management can bring it up, right? but they're not going to bring it up because we sent it to them. Okay, so property management, just to be clear, is not limited in its ability to, okay. No, we're not telling property management they can't look at this. Okay, you know, I'm just forward something to us. <laughs> I'm just trying to clarify. What I'm saying. I want to hear something from property management. I'm I not going to fund a that building that they I, haven't I talked to me about. If I may. Mayor. If, if I may. I so, authority. so property management can bring this back up, and then if property management so decides they could move it forward, then it would come back before this committee, and then the committee would then have another decisions to make in this regard, but they, this committee can't decide it until it returns back from another committee, like property management. And things had not changed too much, have they? Well, and, and let me, and forgive me, I, maybe I misspoke. I, I don't, the only money we had been given was to move forward with the construction phase of Goldstein's, and that's amounting to getting the plans drawn, deciding a contractor getting the bids back in that's the only that's the only thing y'all have authorized us to do okay when this other request came in we knew we didn't have any money there wasn't any money that came with the request and so the architect in his infinite wisdom got us pricing over the last two months to find out what the engineering capabilities were there and somehow the next month this building down here was added to it too i took it as hey if we're going to study everything let's study it and get we're, we're in that information gathering phase for this body right now we were we were just moving forward i was prudent enough just because i've sat here with you gentlemen or some of you and been here before I knew I couldn't award a contract without funding, and, 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 and me and your budget director had that discussion. That's the reason I'm here tonight. So if I have misspoken and mis done anything, I greatly apologize for it. So anyway, we'll, 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 if property management wants us to do it and they can give us some money and y'all decide we'd move forward, we'll take care of it for you. We'll, we've got the numbers. Okay. Well, we're not going to let you go yet, okay? No, no, no. now we've got to talk about the bad thing. Yep. Uh, item 20, uh, we'll go on to that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before we leave. Uh, I recognize. Go ahead. Like Commissioner Irwin, th there was a lot of talk, and I don't remember making any decisions. I understood, uh, Stan, that you just said that you have money to go ahead and move forward with the re rebuilding of the Goldstein's building, is that correct? No, what you have given us money to do is to hire the architect, guarantee payment to the architect for his services, their services, to, to design the building, and then also giving us enough money to hire a contractor to bid the project. Um, the, the way we're set up, and, and, and this is kind of a brief synopsis, and if I misspeak here, please forgive me. But how we operate, because we're an outside body of here, we, we have some latitude that the county commission doesn't. And so we can interview builders and then let that builder do what's, make a decision about who the contractor's gonna be not award a contract, but in the information gathering phase, he and the architect work together. And, I'm, and I sound like I'm being sexist when I say he, I don't mean it, they, right? The, the two people, the two entities, the architect and the builder can work together to do value engineered 
um, cost estimates for us, they arrive at a number, I come back to you for funding. All you've given me is enough money to pay the architect and pay a builder, whoever we decide that is, to do these cost estimates for us. Because this is, I've heard anywhere from $4 million to $8 million. That, that's what they have prepared us for. And so you can't, in, in the modern day world, we can't ask an architect to draw up blueprints for nothing. We can't ask a contractor to spend, you know, 90 days estimating cost and value engineered uh, cost savings and not pay them for their time and so what this that basically 300,000 is to do that with Dan, I, I understand the, the process that we're right. going through but the conversation that I remember uh, and Wayne correct me if I'm wrong but the major conversation after the committee and others toured the Goldstein's building was that there was a lot of concern about rebuilding or building that Goldstein's building when structurally um, there was it seemed to be some concerns I understand from what uh, Commissioner Goose just said Goose just said that it was it was sound and, and we were ready to go with it but the talk out of property management was do we want to spend the money rebuilding that old building or do we just tear it down and build us a new building there, and mm -hmm. that seemed to be what was catching on with that property management discussion. Wayne, did, did and that's a that's a fair characterization. The only thing I would add is there was the expression of other ideas and the willingness to look at many other ideas, you know, with respect to other properties, including the ones we just couple that we just talked about. So it was not. I'm just trying to build on that just a little bit because it was a very wide-ranging discussion and there were concerns about goal seeing. One question I had based on what you were just saying, the timing of the deliverables you just mentioned. The, the, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the timing of the architect report and the other piece that you've indicated you already have funding for. Yes. The what, timing, how long is that? The timing, when, when, where, when are we going to get those deliverables? Um, don't hold me to it, but I think it's 90 days. Okay. I think about three months is our goal and objective to get that to get to to get an art to get a builder. On. We've got the architect on board. They they were hired last year, or last budget year. Okay, that decision's been made. The second thing we have not decided on a contractor. We are we are in the phase right now of advertising for those contractors, and we're interviewing. Again, don't hold me to the calendar because I don't have it. I think it's the 24th of January. We will interview the, 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 the contractors, and at that time we'll probably make a decision. They need about 60 days with the, um, with the architect, I think, to get us hard numbers. Yeah, it, it would be great if maybe, I realize this is a budget meeting, but if you could come to property management. I'll be glad to, and and I apologize. I probably ought to come more often. <laughs> when I yeah, left, here, hey, when I left here 24 years ago, I don't know that I've been back since then, <laughs> other than to sit over there. I mean, I think it'd be great if if, <laughs> if, if Chairman McAdoo could invite you to come and visit a little bit. But I, but just to follow up, Jeff is absolutely right that there were that was the basic thought process. But there was also the additional openness to looking at other ideas. Because we'll, there were, we'll there do were a number you of concerns raised. Yes. But I, yes, my, my intentions, and in, in when the mayor asked about why I'm here instead of going to property management, this was all just wadded up together. I knew I had to report back with, I've, I've got an issue with one stop. Boy, it's going to be a long time. And then and then the, the, the two pricings on Las Casas and Walter Hill for the public safety buildings. And so I, I, I had the, the, I wanted some direction, or he, basically Michael wanted some direction about where, if I'm, if we're going to award these two contracts, where's this money coming from? So right now I don't have any money, so I can't award the contract, and I'm back to scratch, and I'll go to property management with some direction. Thank you. Chairman Phillips, you got another comment? No, just to follow up, Stan, I don't know how confused you are but you're probably a lot more clear than what's going through my mind right now. I, I just want to comment on, on the work 
uh, that the Public Building Authority has done over the last few years, and and just just the amount of things you guys have been trying to keep straight, and I just appreciate you guys more than than we uh, can ever. Okay. We enjoy. We've got a good bunch, and we enjoy. All right, and we're going to go ahead and move to the next discussion, uh, which he's definitely involved in, and this is to discuss the public health and safety building funding. And I have a question before you start is, has this been to public safety? Has not. Okay. Go ahead with your presentation here. All right. And I don't, uh, did you prepare anything in their package? Do they have the numbers? <clears throat> no, no, I, I have some to read. Um, okay. But we got uh, the PBA got numbers back from the contractors for both Walter Hill and Las Casas. And both of those came back over budget approximately $1.3 million, um, give or take some rounding, because we, we don't have all the numbers back for FF&E or uh, IT equipment. Um, so it, I attended PBA the other night, and they'll need some direction from either this body or from the commission of what route to go because if these current prices hold, there will not be enough money to do all six public health and safety buildings. Okay, now let me follow up with that and you gentlemen may want to write this down because I, I, I did not print it, any of this off. I do have it by form of email. Where, where we are, of course we, we're in the middle of building uh, Kittrell and Rockvale and bo both of those are moving along rather fastly and very, very steadily. Um, had not, we have not had very few issues in either one of those buildings. We've had a few hiccups, but they've, they've relatively gone along pretty pretty good. So we have moved forward, same process. And, and what we did last year before we started public safety, to give you all a little background, we interviewed, I think, five contractors. And the thought process from the PBA at the time and we ask our attorney, and our attorney is Brick Murphy, if you, if you uh, fellows don't know that. And he, he works very closely with, with Nick. And so we asked the question, because we had a couple of good, but two people really interviewed very, very well. And building, we knew at that time that we, you were probably gonna tell us to build at least four buildings, if not six, possibly eight. And the thought process from the PBA at the time, okay, can we hire two contractors, award a building to each one of them, and kind of cost compare? Let's see, let's let two of them bid the building. And so with that thought in mind, that's what we did. And the numbers came in very, very close, so we ended up awarding uh, one building to American contractors and one building to Rock City. Let's see, Rock City is at Rockvale, American is um, at Kittrell. And American, uh, a side note here, American is the contractor that the county hired when we built the clerk's building back in probably 1988, something along that line. So they have a relationship with this county. Um, and so now we're ready to do the next two buildings and we've done the same thing. We have asked both contractors and there's been some updating in the design. We've, we've done some value engineering, dot, dot, dot. There's a process that w we have gone through with our architect to try to save as much money as we can for the county and any mistake we made on the first building we don't make on the you know second, third, fourth, or fifth one. And so now we have asked for pricing for, from both of those contractors again. Tentatively, we have assigned um, Las Casas to American and Rock City to Walter Hill. Now, we have not awarded the contract to either one because my understanding, Brick's understanding was that you put a, um, Y'all wanted to report back from us before you turned us loose with the next round of funding. So uh, my report to you tonight is this. And like I said, you may want to write this down. Rock City's bid came in at 
six hundred dollars. Might as well say seven million nine hundred ninety-five right at. For which building? Th this would be for Walter Hill. And Americans came in at eight million five hundred thousand. So, cool. if you look at that on the surface right now, Stand wait a minute. Let, let me finish it because I'm gonna go through the analysis of it. Um, it looks like there's about five hundred thousand dollars difference. But what we have been doing with Michael's help and Brick's help is that they have dove through these numbers for the last five days, I guess, looking at, com Brick's trying to look at the legal side of it, how they bid it, did they follow directions, did they do it the way we wanted to do. In other words, w we think these two bids are apples and oranges, they're not apples and apples, so we're trying to get it down to apples and apples. We think at the end of the day there's not going to be somewhere around $200,000 difference between the two contracts. So. What we would like to do is be able to award the contract to somebody, one, both, whatever, uh, at the next meeting. Again, we don't have the money to do that yet. You, you guys haven't turned us loose with that money. The second part of this conversation is they're about a, a little over a million dollars higher than we were a year ago. And so kind of predicting going forward, we have to assume that if cost increases continue the way they've been continuing, are the two buildings next year that you have asked us to put on our agenda, which we have, and that is uh, Christiana and Dale Webb, right, in that order. Christiana's going to be first, Dale Webb second. And, and another thing, I've got to have a little money for Christiana right now because we've got to study the site. Um, that's another conversation, but, but we're moving to gathering information on Christiana right now. Part of my conversation with you guys tonight, and let the full commission know this, is that these buildings are getting higher every year. And what, when, when this was originally envisioned, I think three years ago by the commission, we thought these buildings were going to be in the four, four and a half million dollar range, and you had about 30 million dollars or something, you could build six buildings. Well, all of a sudden, they're, they're, you know, they're pushing what? What did I say? Eight, yeah, eight million dollars. Uh, one thing I would, uh, and, and you're gonna say, well, Stan, why is there so much difference in the two bids? Uh, American included FF and E and technology in it. And if you didn't hear this through the grapevine, when we got into renovating uh, the building over here on the north side of the square, there was great confusion in the contract that IT was not included in the bid, and we had to worm our way through that one for six months. That was not a pleasant thing. And so uh, Wilkie and the, the, the group at IT, has, they sit in on every meeting with us. They're making sure for y'all's part, our part, that IT is not left out of this at all, because technology is such a big part of running any of these government buildings anymore. Um, but the, the, the FF and E and IT, it, it doesn't appear that American put a placeholder number or any kind of estimate there. So that's the reason we think the numbers are going to be real close at the end of the day between those two contractors. Did I answer that right, Michael? Is that, and that's what you kind of come up with, you and Brick. That, that, is, that is correct. Once you add up everything together, they are not, they are less than $200,000 apart, and they are about $1.3 million over. Right. That's, that's per, a lot per, of per building. Yeah. We're, we're looking close to $3 million overrun for these two, two, buildings. two buildings. Yes, that's correct. Yes. Yes. That's, like I said, I didn't mean to be the bearer of bad news tonight, but I think most of you probably figured it was coming. Right, and that's not counting the Christiana Ambleville. We don't have bids on those, right? No. Now, kind of a little bit that I know about what we've got going on here. We have spent, of course, we're, we're in the process with Rockvale and Kittrell right now, and they, of course, have run over. We thought we were going to get them for about 4.5 starting out. You know, that sounded really good. We had the money to do that, and we went ahead and said, well, let's do six of these. You know, we bit off a pretty good bite here, and that's actually why I stand if this has gone to, to uh, public safety. And here's why. We're going to have to make a decision of, one, we're going to be looking at a tax increase to go with $3 million, in my opinion. I, 
otherwise you can tell me where we can find it. I don't know. Uh, but we've spent money on last casts, I think about 180,000, somewhere in that neighborhood. We've also spent money on Walter Hill doing testing. Same thing. We've spent about 150 on each of those Walter Hill and Las Casas. Okay. And those are the design fees to the architect firm. Now we don't have any expenditures yet on the the last two. You know that's just on the first four. Uh, what my question is: There's a couple of options we've got. We could say hold off on funding Dell Webb or Christiana since we haven't got money in either one of them. That's a decision. I feel better coming out of public safety to start with. It gives us a little more time to look at it too. But there are other options there. For instance, the Walter Hill uh, facility, we've actually got a Walter Hill fire department in place right now. Uh, it's running out of the uh, old Walter Hill volunteer area over at the convenience center. But I think that that ought to be a recommendation that comes from public safety to us and then you know, we decide whether we want to fund it or not or how we would fund it, personal opinion. But like I said, I'd like to get input from that committee since, you know, let's. I don't remember any of it being discussed at public safety. I don't remember any of this discussion at public safety. Well, we didn't, we didn't find out that the bids were overrun until, what, last week, something like that, Thursday night. So, I mean, there hadn't been an opportunity. It, it really needs to go back, I think. Well, that, that's my opinion, but I, you know, does anybody else in the committee want to speak up on this? I've got one question. I think, Mayor, if, if my memory serves me right, we had about $32 million in COVID money for these buildings. Is that right? Yeah, that's the ARPA money, and that is allocated uh, f uh, for this, these particular facilities. That is correct. Uh, I, I want to caution the committee on something the chairman said and just reiterate it. We carried out of the last budget into this budget year a $21 million uh, hole that we already had that, that we carried forward that's going to have to be dealt with, uh, just so you know. So if we're going to fund, in my estimation, and I was going to get with Chief Farley on this chairman, and we could come back to uh, Public Works and this committee, but if we're going to fund Walter Hill and Las Casas, it's going to be extremely difficult to do that without pulling money from Del Webb. It's not saying we can't do it, it's just going to be extremely challenging to do that. And so it, it matters how we prioritize these things, because remember, Del Webb wasn't coming from ARPA money. <coughs> if that was coming, it, that was all being financed internally with us because that land was being donated, if you remember. So the land was being donated, and so that was the impetus for funding that sixth, bu sixth building, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Chairman, if that's right. So there, I think there are some funds available for that, for that particular, coming from that f particular facility, and I, <clears throat> there may be an opportunity for Dell Webb to be built because of the, where that is located and the nature of that facility with that particular development in mind, and what I would want permission from this body is maybe to reach out to the developer at Dell Webb and see if there's anything they could do to help us in building that facility because it's, it is number six as I understand it in, in priority. So there are several things working here, um, but I do think it's important to proceed with the public safety buildings. Uh, I think it's very, very important and um, I'll leave it at that. I have a question for Michael. Michael, do you have uh, a ballpark figure of how much money might be left in this $32 million COVID grant? There, so you're, originally there was $36 million of ARPA money allocated to these public health and safety buildings. So there is no money left. We also took uh, 20, almost $24 million of revenue loss. That went into the general fund and a roundabout way that went in to funding the Dell Webb project. And it also kind of propped up the general fund last year um, to not show a loss. And what the mayor is referring to is the budget deficit this year, which is approximately $21 million, you know, where expenditures are over revenues. That, that's what he's referring to as far as this year. Um, but there is no more money left of ARPA. Comment. Go ahead, Paul. You're not done. Mr. 
Piercy, go ahead. Wasn't there $14 million taken out of the second phase of the grant for the extra two buildings? If you're talking about all of the ARPA money, um, 36 Point seven million in total was for those these emergency health and safety buildings, and then um, total ARPA money we got sixty four million dollars, sixty four point five million dollars, thirty six point seven of it went to these five buildings, the five, not the Del Web, the first five. And then we used approximately four million dollars for premium pay. That's the bonus we gave to the to the county employees. Then we took twenty three point seven million for revenue loss. That money went into the county's general fund. And then out of that revenue loss, we took 1.2 million and 7.3 million for the Christiana project or for the Del Webb project and for um, some other legal fees and stuff associated with those. We moved that to 171. So total amount of money for these buildings taken out of the 60 some odd million was 35? Uh, 36 million plus an additional almost 8 million. So thir 36 and 8. Uh, 44. Yeah. How much? 44 million. 44. For six buildings? Correct. So we're looking for what? Maybe 13 to 15 percent for each building to get to the new price? I haven't, I haven't done that percentage, but yes, that, that sounds close. Small investment. The longer we turn stand down, the, the higher it's going to be, too. So, you know. Well, if I may, uh, at least my office is not considering turning them down. What we're trying to do is we're trying to find the funds commissioner where we can move forward in an expedited manner so the cost doesn't go up. Uh, that's, but what we've heard from Mr. Vaught tonight is that we've got an increase of the next two facilities of $1.3 million each. So this body and the mayor's office are trying to figure out where we're going to get $1.3 million each. not ins insignificant, but nor is it insurmountable. I'm not intimidated by the task. Maybe the direct, maybe the finance director can tell us what our options are. So <clears throat> quickly today, you, you kind of have two quick options. I'm not, I'm not advocating for either one. I'm just, um, the first option is to postpone one of the public health and safety buildings and go back to the drawing board on funding for that one. I do think the easiest one uh, to postpone would be the Dell Webb one. That was that's because that one's budgeted out of our 171, and does not have a time frame on those funds to be spent. The other option would be to dip into your fund balance, uh, your unassigned fund balance, um, and obviously that would that would take that lower. Your fund balance right now is sitting at about 29.37%. Uh, um, so that would drop that, you know, a percentage point or two. So. So as we stand today, that would probably be your two options tonight. And don't we have to be careful with regard to our uh, bond rating? That, that? That's correct. Um, Thank but you. as far as funding for tonight, that would be your two two options. Um, you know, there's obviously more options once you get into next uh, budget year. So if you were to postpone, let's say, the Dell Webb one, you know, there's obviously more options to funding that one as we get into next budget year um, in June and July. And it might be a temporary postponement, Commissioner. Uh, the postponement would be to get to Walter Hill and Las Casas. Uh, it, I, I hope it would be a temporary postponement. That would be my expectation because I think uh, moving forward there might be some funding options available to the county that heretofore we haven't been able to consider. Although I won't make any promises in that regard, um, that would be my recommendation, at least at this point. Kind of get, well, let me follow up. It sounds like somebody, you know, I'm, I know this is not going on, gone over where, very well, but the, the, the insight we would add, I think, myself included and a couple of other committee members that are in the construction business, 
we, we were really anticipating that some of the subcontractors would maybe come in a little bit cheaper right now than they did this time last year. Because you, you, you got to think about where we've been the last 18 months with supply chain management, with labor cost, we've seen concrete go up, we've seen lumber double in price. We, we have dealt with a lot of stuff in the construction business. On the, on the, on the flip side, me being in the real estate business, we have seen prices start coming back down. Now we're seeing it immediately, right? It, it, I, as, as an auctioneer, I see it every Saturday. Uh, I would share this with you, that selling the same house May 1st, I sold the same house two weeks ago, it's about 10 or 15% difference. It's gone down that much this year. So that's putting a damper on new construction a little bit. Now, con commercial construction, we did not see any price decreases in this bid. We, we were really, I was personally disappointed. I thought we would see some of it come down compared to what we had to deal with last year. The insight may be, and I, and I know you can't run a county on hope and prayer, but the other side of it may be that these next two buildings, depending on when you assign those to us, we, we may see a 5 or 10% decrease in price this time next year. Our architect is preparing us that it's going to continue to go up that 1% a year, 2%, excuse me, 1% a month, 2% a month. Those of us that are day in, day out in real estate right now do not think that. You know, if you listen to the gurus out of Washington, Wall Street, everybody says we're in a recession this time next year. Um, I thought we were in a recession back in, you know, May when gas was $5 a gallon myself. I, I, I was in a recession at my house. I don't know about y'all, but from $2 to $5, it's pretty tough, right? So I, I don't, I think this thing kind of starts working itself out this coming year. What, what we know is we've got to keep moving forward. I, my personal opinion as a maybe as a taxpayer not having anything to do with this, I'd hate to see y'all postpone these projects because we've got these numbers locked in right now and they're good for about 30 days. And, 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 and what we learned on the one-stop building because there was a delay of 90 days between the bid and, and, and us signing the contract, we've got several cost overruns out there. And that's, that's, that's another subject. I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about that tonight or not. No, because it's not ready. Um, but some of you, I, I guess, have anticipated that. We've had some cost overruns at one stop, and that's numbers from basically 18 months ago. And, and so we're having to deal with that this year, too. So I, I don't, I mean, yes, it's not good, but, you know, is it catastrophic? I don't think so. I think you're very prudent in taking that money and, and solidifying, you know, public safety buildings throughout this county that ring Murfreesboro that we can continue to serve the taxpayer. But now I sound like a politician, and I'm not supposed to be standing up here sounding like a politician, but that's my two cents. Well, I, I for one, value your input. I remember being sitting out there in the audience watching you as commissioner. I think you always were doing a good job for us. Commissioner Johnson, you've got a comment. I've, I've got a question. Michael, did you say that we have a 29.37% uh, ending fund balance now? For the county general fund, yes. However, I will add that is starting to get dangerous you know, if you keep ta if, if it keeps going down, that would get dangerously low from keeping our current AAA bond rating. But yes, twenty nine point three seven. Okay, what have we been operating on a uh, healthy ending fund balance percentage wise? Above thirty percent. Uh, we started the year with thirty seven percent. Okay. And we took, if y'all remember back, it was right around the time I got here. It may have been July. Right before I got here, it may have been August. There was eight million and something moved out of fund balance into 177 for that Dell Webb building because of the increase previous of the first five buildings. And so that dropped our fund balance down to 29.37. You're recommending that we uh, kind of postpone these, these two now, is that correct? No, sir, I did not make that recommendation. Okay, My recommendation was that uh, we move forward, but 
as a temporary solution to moving forward with these two, we moved the money allocated for Del Webb to these two so we could move forward. That would be my recommendation as okay. a temporary solution. Because Del Webb was number six, and these were numbers three and four in order of priority and importance as determined by the previous county commission, that would be my recommendation at this time. I understand. Okay, okay. so basically, uh, excuse me, one more. Uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Vaught. Uh, life is a gamble, so we would be we would be gambling on maybe hopefully these would come down uh, cost wise and so forth and so on. I mean, right, 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 right. But you know, it's just kind of like the old said, "How high's up?" We don't really know, you know. Chairman Harris, you recognize. Okay, let's see if I get this right. I am for postponing Del Webb, but what do we need from this committee tonight to go forward with all the buildings that we got right now? I don't think this committee has an action before it. I could be mistaken, but I don't believe there's an action before it because if I understand Mr. Vaught correctly, this was just a report and that's all that he was bringing to this committee. Mr. Vaught, am I mistaken here? My, my understanding was that y'all had designated the, the money to build these buildings out of what the, the federal money, <clears throat> but before you guys turned us loose, you wanted to see the numbers this go round before I signed any contract with any contractor. That was my understanding. Where the money comes from or how it balances out, I don't know. M my full intention was to prepare you that there's not enough money there to build all six. Correct, and there's an extenuating circumstance here that we both are uh, trying to navigate through as well that is a part of this uh, going forward, correct? No, okay, then never mind. We, to answer your question, we will need a motion to increase the budget of these two projects. Um, and, I, and I would say part of that motion needs to be to, to postpone if, if that's this committee's choice to postpone, where's that money coming from would have to be as part of that motion. Um, because as it stands right now, the PBA does not have enough money. F even if they were to award these two projects, they don't have enough money for those two projects. Oh, one other thing I want to bring up, unless I've got a comment from the committee, Commissioner Irvin. Um, backing up briefly, Kittrell and Rockville, what's the overrun on those? Actually, right now, both of those are within budget. Okay. Uh, if you okay. look, uh, excuse me. Um, They're within their expanded budget. It, yes. We, originally, it was They're within their expanded million. budget of 7.2 million and some change, almost 7.3. Yes, and they're within budget. We've got uh, for each of them is seven point two or seven point three. Uh, the budget for Kittrell is seven million two hundred ninety four thousand six hundred ten dollars. That, that's that's with FF and E yes. and and IT Correct. included. That's the total for the project for that. Th project. That's what y'all will know is total. And Rockville. Rockville, was. the total including FF and E and IT and some architect cost is seven million three hundred seventy six thousand one hundred five dollars. There was just a little bit of money difference in the two. Okay, and then Walter Hill's coming in at uh, roughly eight. Las Casas is roughly eight. Okay, that's 14 plus 15, 29. Those are both coming in at roughly 8.5. I'm gonna tell you 8.5 right now. With FF and E and IT stuff, those are coming okay, so in. So what's the total for Kittrell, Rockville, Walter Hill, and Las Casas? Punching it out for us. I can't add that quick. Seven so. and a half, seven and a half, eight and a half, eight and a half. That'd be round numbers. Yep. That that doesn't do it with an accountant. These are not. While he's calculating, these are not the only numbers we need to talk about tonight. If you're talking about doing something, and I'll tell you why. I, I recommend taking this back to public safety. Or we're still waiting on that. I'll go ahead and say 
I'd like for public safety to have the input on this. For one, is they may have a preferred builder after looking at these two projects. That's one thing. They may have a different idea. You know, they may think the holding up on Dell Webb and then doing it as quickly as we can, that may be something they'd want to do. But, you know, the elephant in the room here is you're going to have a building sitting there, and who's going to be running the fire engines in there? You have no personnel for Amable or the Dell Webb. You have no personnel for Christiana. So uh, you have no personnel. If, if you're doing away with all the volunteers, which it sounds like y'all are wanting to do, then you're looking at picking up funding for Las Casas, the funding for Christiana and the funding for, Christi uh, for Dale Webb, which is another at least 45 personnel. You got any idea of what the cost is on that? 15, we added to the budget this year 15 firefighters. That included three lieutenants, three engineers, and eight firefighters. So that was a cost of 759000 just for their salaries. So you add on another, let's say, 20% for Social Security Medicare benefits. $911,000 for 15 uh, personnel. Like I said, that includes three lieutenants, three engineers, and eight firefighters. So just for 15, you're talking $911,000. So a million dollars extra. And, and the number was actually 30, not 15. It was 15 for Rockville, and then they put in another 15 Correct. for so, Kitchell. So you times that, yeah. So for 30 personnel, it'd be $2 million. It's going to be 45 personnel. Oh, it's so not 30, it's 45. That's correct. But uh, my contention on this, of course, I come out of a volunteer organization. We still have volunteers in these departments. And personally, I'd like to see our volunteers stay there as long as they can do the job and they're helping us. You know, we've got an extra 15 people right now, personal opinion speaking. We could take those 15 people and disperse them into the departments that we've got uh, at Kittrell, Las Casas, at uh, Christiana, and at Amable, put two to three in each station, and during the daytime hours, Monday through Friday, daytime, that's when the volunteers are hurting for manpower. They've got people at night, and they've got people on the weekends. Then, as these buildings come on, if said, sees, hey, this is not working here. We can t move those people into one of those stations. But I don't see spending money for personnel that we don't have to spend it on if we've got people that are volunteering and doing that job. That's personal opinion. But again, I I'd prefer this all to go back to public safety and let them give us their preferences there. Is there a timing issue with taking it back to public safety? I heard 30 days, Stan. Is, is would that be an issue getting it through public safety and then back here what about the recommendation that the mayor had approving the two which would be walter hill and kittrell las casas i'm sorry and and removing taking that money from dale webb and then sending everything back to public works for public safety for discussion sure, man. and that's exactly what I'd like to see us do. However, I want input from public safety to decide if they want to keep both contractors or if they want one contractor over the other. I think that's an issue that needs to be looked at. And I think that can come, Mayor, you want to? No, I, 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 can, I, I want to second, I don't, I don't have a vote, <laughs> much less a second, but I want to affirm what the chairman's saying. I would like to go back to safety to make sure that public safety understands this and there can be a recommendation from public safety about the two or the one, or if, if it's one, which one, and then we can expedite it going out of that. My, the question, the answer I was trying to give Commissioner Piercy was how do we fund it without delaying it? And so I was trying to answer that question for those two in particular, because Dell Webb was number six, it gives us a little time to find the money for Dell Webb. I think we need to move forward with Last Cassis and, and uh, Walter Hill. <laughs> Back to public safety with my suggestion. Stan, when's your next meeting with your committee? Oh, yeah, public safety, I think, meets the 19th this, this month, I believe. It'll meet between now and commission no 
Does it not? Does it meet before commission or after uh, commission? They, they had changed after it. They, they're usually the fourth Monday, but they moved it up to Miss Christmas week. It's the 19th, I'm thinking, but I may be I may be off on that. Public safety. Chairman, I want to reiterate. So and this is my question to the mayor. I am for postponing Dale Webb. But I also want to make sure we're still committed to Dale Webb. We're just postponing it for right now. I want to be really clear, Commissioner, and that's, I'm glad you're bringing this up because I do not want to be misunderstood here. In my mind, this is a temporary postponement, if at all. It's just we're trying to, we're taking the money out of the Dell Web since it's number six, moving it forward because we have a shortfall. Then this body, especially in the coming budget year, will dedicate itself to finding the money necessary to to build out Dell Webb. That, that's, all I'm, that's all I'm trying to do here is keep things moving instead of grinding to a halt. Sure, because what I'm concerned with, I want Walter Hill and the Cassis to go forward. So if we had to postpone, I'm, all, I'm okay with that, but I'd like to get those two, you know, that's what we've been wanting to do, so let's do that. Anyway, there's no vote tonight on anything. It just needs to go back to public safety. So, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to send this back to public safety. And <laughs> let them deal with this and then bring it back to us okay i have a motion to take this back to public safety and i have a second now i want to discuss this for a minute who, who the, the only second? problem i'm seeing is uh, is that going to mess you up on your your time can you change and meet at a different time so that you could still uh All right. let me let me let me ask this question let, let, and, and i can answer you then so if, if y'all don't take act, where well, the action you take, send it back to public safety. Go to public safety, then it's gonna come back to you guys next month, then go to the full commission. What date would that be in January that you would approve the, the, the money for me to be able think, to execute the contract? I think contract. it's the 12th. I think it's January the 12th is the second Thursday after the first Monday in January. So, so theoretically, I could sign a contract that, because the, P, the PBA has approved this. They just have not approved the contractor. They, they've, they've, we've accepted the bids, but we have not assigned it to anybody because we do not have the money. We couldn't legally assign it. So we could have a meeting immediately after the full commission approved this to assign it. M my only concern, and I think that's doable, I think these prices are good until January the 20th. I don't know why I think that, but well, it may be through January. Stan, we'd be at 34 days plus or minus a day on, on the 12th, and your, what you're outlining as a scenario, at least from the mayor's office, would be a doable. I just, I would like to see this go back to public safety just, and then move it out of there quickly as we can if it's okay. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion on this motion, which are, is to send this back to public safety? You guys the budget meets on the 12th of January? No, the 5th. Full commission. Any other discussion? Call roll, Mark. Commissioner Urban? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Serino? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Okay, this will be sent to public safety's agenda, and we'll look at it the 19th of this month. Yes, sir. Five thirty is normal. Yeah. You know, they should meet in these chambers. And, and I do, and I enjoyed, I, I, I really, and again, I apologize for not coming and visiting with you guys more than, than I ever have. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm willing to come every month if you want me to, but I don't really want to bore you with all of what we have to deal with every month anyway, but we knew we needed to come here. I, I feel a little obligated too. I think some of you know this, but, but hopefully we'll have a resolution. We've had a little bit of cost overrun 
with one stop and with Michael's help and especially the mayor's help through this, we've asked them to, to participate with us in negotiating with the contractor for these cost overruns. Some of them are within the scope of the project, some of them are out of the scope of the project. And, you know, I feel like our job is to get the building built on time for you guys and, and, and get it taken care of the best way possible. And so hopefully we'll have a resolution in January to, to, to that. We, it's going to be a little over the money that you've given us, but we'll, we'll hopefully with the mayor's help, we'll get this resolved here in the next 30 days. So I'll be back to see you in January. And good Thank to see you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I noticed a couple of people running in and out. Do we? I'm gonna uh, let us take a let's say five minute break, and then we'll come back. Okay, we're gonna call ourselves back into session, and our next discussion is to uh, discuss a lobbyist. I got that right, I believe. I'm just finding item 20, discussion of a 21, a general fund budget amendment for lobbyists. That would be me, Mr. Chairman, if you would like for me to comment on this. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor? <clears throat> yes, sir. To expedite matters, uh, I will go ahead and make the motion that we approve this request. Okay. <laughs> I won't stand in the way. <laughs> I have a motion on the floor to approve uh, a lobbyist, and I'd I'll like second. to at least hear some figures on that. I'll, I'll second. And I have There's a second. Okay, <laughs> Mayor. What, what I would like the mayor, just for the benefit of the folks, because I'm certain if we don't do some kind of explanation about what this is, I will get calls and text messages. I, I'm, I'm glad to answer and all <laughs> any and all questions in this regard. So let me, get, if I may, I'll take two minutes and give some background, then I can field some questions. Uh, this request came through steering committee, Chairman Harris's committee, came out with a seven nothing vote. Um, we're very appreciative. So in, real quickly, in 2006, the Tennessee General Assembly determined in their infinite wisdom that they would pass a piece of legislation literally in the last two or three days of the last session of the 104th General Assembly before they signed it died that allowed, that stipulated that the cities and the counties would be held to two different standards as, at to, as with regard to how they would fund the growth that each county or each city was to provide for. That growth would be funding for schools, fire, EMS, sheriff, um, roads, these kind of things. And so this particular bill was called the 2006 County Powers Relief Act, when in fact it really was a tax act because it, it gave the authority, only the counties had the authority to raise revenue through a facilities tax and it provided a formula by which it could do that. This particular bill passed and it specifically exempted the cities. And so for 17 years, almost 17 years, the counties in Tennessee that this bill applied to have worked, have been at a, at a disadvantage in comparison to the municipalities in those same counties as to how do they pay for the growth that necessarily occurs because of the attractiveness of our community to all communities across the country. People are wanting to move here. As a matter of fact, and I've said this before and you already know, we'll be the fourth largest county this time next year with a 2.7 to 3% annual growth rate year over year. That's according to the United States Census. So the question is, is how do we fund this growth? And that's not the point of my discussion tonight. How we fund the growth is for a later discussion by this body and the full county commission with hopefully some input from the office of the mayor. The point is, we need, in order to get on a level playing field with the municipalities in Tennessee about how we fund for that growth, it's my opinion that if we're gonna get on the field and make that help them make that determination, the Tennessee General Assembly, we need to hire professionals who can advocate on our behalf in that regard. And so that's what this is for. And I'll be glad to take questions. There's a old, I recognize 
Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, we talked about this in steering, so I agree with this 100%. Um, what I want to be clear on, Mayor, is one of the things we talked about is you're also in talks with other counties as far as getting some type of support. Is that correct? Most certainly. I have talked to several county mayors across the state, and this idea has received enthusiastic support. And um, I think there's an opportunity to right a serious wrong. And it hasn't doesn't have anything to do right now with whether we raise impact fears or not. All it is is this county, along with the 94 other counties across the state, deserve an opportunity to determine how they're going to pay for the growth that the cities already have the ability to do. So the answer to your question is yes. And here's the thing about a lobbyist. We don't need a lobbyist just only for the County Relief Act. We need a, a, a lobbyist full time for us because we have so many things we need to get through. So. <laughs> You're asking for $50,000? No, sir. What, the, what, what came out of steering committee was two tranches of 50 at $100,000 total. So, so $100,000. So the first 50 you're wanting now, and then is the other one coming later in a request? No, both, both tranches would happen in this physical year ending June 30th. So because the Tennessee General Assembly typically adjourns, end of April, middle of May time frame, uh, this would be uh, spread out over between now and probably June 30th to conclude in this physical year, both tranches is our proposal. And I will say this, there are other counties who've already passed, one county in particular, Murray County has already passed a similar resolution to do the same thing. Commissioner Johnson. There's an old adage that there's <clears throat> Excuse me. There's strength in numbers, and another old adage that sometimes you have to spend money to make money. So I think this is uh, a, a legitimate uh, request, and uh, I think it's money well invested. Well, I, I, if I may, Mr. Chairman, I have done my research on this. I have spoken to the governor's senior staff on this. I've spoken to House and Senate leadership on this, and I would never, ever predict an outcome, uh, especially with regard to a legislative activity. But I've spoken to some of you, and I genuinely believe this was a bill, again, that passed in the last two or three days of the 104th General Assembly without the knowledge of a lot of the members about understanding what happened, it has stayed in effect, unfortunately, and it has created an unlevel playing field between the counties and the cities that I don't think was necessarily supposed to be the case. Regardless of how we got here, all this office of the mayor and the other mayors across the state of Tennessee are asking for is to put, be put on the same lev level of, of how do we fund for our growth that the cities currently have, the cities in Tennessee. They have, they have options that we don't have, and I'm just saying we deserve those same options. Whether we exercise them or not, I don't know. That's to be, that's to be determined, but we deserve those same options. The, the act that you're talking about, what is it specifically called again? I'm going to give you the renaming of it. <laughs> it's, the, <laughs> it's the 2006 County Powers Tax Act. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, it, here's why I'm asking. Yes, sir. It, it's the County Powers Act. Yes, sir. Has different sections in it. It does. And you're specifically aiming at that part of That's it. correct. Because there, there are other, for instance, uh, uh, in that County Powers Act, if you adopt it, for instance, you could set up a nuisance or noise ordinance yes. on your own. And I want to make sure we don't take away no, we're, something that and we're actually going to be looking at this next month, I think. But so anyway. this, is very, this is very, very targeted. And, and, and gentlemen, let me just say this. The way it was structured, I don't think it was amended, intended to be this way, but so many times the Tennessee General Assembly intends to do one thing and unfortunately something else results. I was up there six years, I know a little bit about this, and I don't think it was meant to be this way, but the current structure in Rutherford County with so many other counties across the state is the only way we have to fund 
the growth that we're experiencing, the exponential growth we have experienced, or we're experiencing, is through property taxes. That's pretty much it, because the facilities tax, and Chairman Harris can speak to this, the facilities tax is completely inadequate because you're only allowed a 10% increase every four years. Well, that doesn't even keep up with the rate of inflation, much less the rate of growth. So in order to bridge that gap, we've got to raise property taxes. That is illustrated by the fact that in budget year for Rutherford County 21-22, 69% of the budget was for education. The budget year 22-23, it was 76%. So the growth of schools on our budget is growing. Well, what does that do? It squeezes out sheriff, fire, we just had a conversation tonight about public safety buildings, EMS, roads. These are necessary functions that government is supposed to provide that every homeowner expects. They expect these things, yet we are handcuffed in providing these essential services because of an antiquated bill that no longer serves the public good. That's why I'm asking for some assistance with a lobbyist in Nashville. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. Commissioner Piercy. Is this for one, a half a dozen, or I'm talking about lobbyists? Yes, sir. No, sir. I, great question. <laughs> I am, we have already sent out an RFP, and we sent an RFP to probably 18, maybe 20 firms. These are firms with multiple personnel. It's my intent uh, to have boots on the ground in Nashville when it becomes appropriate. This Did session coming. Do they charge by the hour, by the project? It's a, flat, it's a flat fee. They have to be careful about how they're incentivized, so we got to make sure we're in compliance with state law. There are very strict laws regarding how lobbyists are to be compensated, and I've been in uh, discussions with Nick Christensen to ensure that we do exactly as the law requires in this regard, and we will be. How long will this 100,000 run? My goal, my goal is this uh, project would last to the end of the session, which would be on or about uh, the beginning to the, or to the middle of May when they, when they adjourn. So six, uh, five, to five months, five to six months. Are you ready for the motion? We have a motion in a All second. Right. <clears throat> Just real Other quick, discussion, Commissioner. how does the, legis uh, the delegation feel about this? That's a great question. Um, I have, they, you'll get probably a variety of answers because I don't think they've understood exactly. Let me back up, Commissioner Gooch. Typically, this has been approached um, by this body in two different ways with two different resolutions. And, and I think, and if I'm not mistaken, and uh, Chairman Phillips could speak to this, that I believe there were 21 to zero votes each time in support of repealing the 2006 County Powers Tax Act. But the approach has always been that the counties need more money, the counties need more money, and they do. But I'm approaching this a little bit differently, and while the counties need more money, that's a secondary effect. That's a decision to be made later based on the decision the Tennessee General Assembly can make in the, fa in the fact that this piece of legislation is patently unfair because it puts a burden on property tax owners to pay for the expansion of a service. Property taxes ostensibly are for the maintenance and upgrade of the existing service. So we have an existing service area that's provided by our those services in the aforementioned. If we expand that because of our growth, the growth necessarily should be paid for. The growth of that service or expansion of that service should necessarily be paid for those who are asking for it. And then the property taxes then would pay for the maintenance and upgrade of that existing service. I don't think the General Assembly has understood that argument before because as a conservative, that's a very, very conservative argument. If you want it, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Gooch, that's great, you should have it but you should pay for it. You shouldn't make the, the lady and her husband of 75 years in the K uh, Kittrell community pay for the expansion of your brand new house in the Blackman community. You should pay for that. And I think any conservative would agree with that. And that's all I'm saying. And so by, by conversely, the cities have that ability. They have a, the ability that if you want it, fine. You will pay for it and then your property taxes will pay for the maintenance and upgrade of that existing service. 
the counties don't have that same privilege, and that's all I'm asking for. Well, basically, this would just be for this legislative session. It, it would not be in perpetuity. I mean, from from well, now on. I don't know what you mean by this legislation in, this, in perpetuity, but I will say this. My expectation and the goal I'm working for with your assistance and the help of mayors across Tennessee is that we would get a bill passed in the Tennessee General Assembly in the first session of the 114th General Assembly that would give us the flexibility to assess the necessary impact fees that would allow us to pay for the growth without burdening the existing property tax base. That's the goal. Oh, we, I know that um, in the past, other county commissions have sent us uh, a request to uh, vote in favor of a resolution, so to speak, up at the state. Is that can we do that with other county commission, other counties? Is, ask, request them to. We we can, and indeed, I was going to come to this body at the beginning of the year and request a very detailed resolution laying out the argument of why this is necessary and why it is fair, regardless of whether we ever raise an impact fee or not, which would be potential, would be the potential result. But the argument is we want to be treated on the same playing field as our cities are with regard to how we fund growth. Whether we ever exercise that option is to be determined, but we deserve the right to have that same flexibility. So are we safe to say that you will give us reports? I'm sorry? So is it safe for us to actually, I'm requesting that we get reports from you when you have with our lobbyists. Most certainly. So letting us know what's going on. Well, I hope, Mr. Commis uh, Commissioner Harris, I hope in the 100, today's my 100th day on the job, I have, hope I have demonstrated that I'm bending over backward to make sure that you guys are in, properly informed and appropriately informed about all the activities out of the mayor's office. And the answer to your question is absolutely. Any further discussion? If not, we have a motion and a second. Call roll, Mark. Commissioner Urban? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Serino? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman. <laughs> All right. Guys, we're getting down to the short rows here. We've got item 22 is uh, authorized representative for the Department of Justice Just Grants System. One of y'all want to read that or, or explain to what we're looking at? You've got it on your iPads. Um, I can read that to y'all if y'all would like. Um, but really, this is this is to to change to have an authorized representative for us to accept uh, Department of Justice grants in their system. Um, when speaking with the county attorney, we felt that it needed to come before this body uh, for approval. And just for old times' sakes, here I'm going to go ahead and read this resolution so people at home know exactly what we're talking about. Where is the? Just grants in the U.S. Department of Justice, DOJ, grants management system used by the Office of Justice Programs, the OJP, the Office of on Violence Against Women, OVW, and the Office of Community Oriented Policing Services, COPS Office, for the process of reviewing and accepting federal grant awards and where such systems require the designation of an authorized representative to accept said federal grant awards and who would be fully authorized to enter into an agreement with the DOJ for said grant and must certify that they have the authority to accept an award on behalf of the entity. And whereas such authorized representation should, must possess the legal authority to accept awards and to bind the entity to the award terms and conditions. Now therefore be it resolved by the Rutherford County Board of Commissioners that the mayor's chief of staff, Eric Hennessy, shall be and hereby is approved as the authorized representative on behalf of Rutherford County for the purpose of accepting federal grant awards on behalf of Rutherford County through the DOJ's just grant system. <coughs> and I'll stop there, but anyway, you, you see what we're talking about. Is there any 
Any questions for Mayor or Mayor, would you like to come? Just real quickly, I asked Chief of Staff Hennessy to do this because of his legal background and his familiarity with the judicial system, obviously, and because of some of the things that I'll be doing the first part of the year, um, he will do a most excellent job. So I'm looking forward to him doing this. Thank you. Just one Phillips. quick question. This is an application for a grant. No. No, Correct. no, no. This is just for him to go in there into the system and to approve grants that this yeah. this body has already approved. The reason I asked that was uh, they bind the entity to the award terms and conditions. We know what those are. Yeah, that, that, that would be after the grant comes before this, this body and the commission. This is really in lieu of the mayor logging in and clicking a button that says accept. So we know what the terms and conditions yes, are. Yes, you will have, he, you have to approve it before he can go in the system and approve it. Yes. Any further discussion? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Commissioner Urban moves to approve. Second. Pierce, he seconds. Any further discussion? Call roll. Commissioner Urban? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Piercy? Yes. Commissioner Serenio? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, last item here that I'm aware of anyway is our 2023-2024 budget <laughs> calendar and schedule. Michael, you want to tell us about that? So. This is very similar to prior years and when me and Mark were looking at this, it actually on, almost lined up to the day from 2017, I believe, um, give or take one day. Um, the only change that, that we've made from the previous year is we changed when the Board of Education um, date is on here. We made that May 15th, which is per the Private Act. They're gonna be struggling to get their budget to us this year in general with the new funding formula. They have still not received that. So that date is on here as May 15th. Um, and I believe it was in April of the previous years or, or, or earlier in May, but that date is on here is May 15th. And I believe that was the only major change that we made. We normally meet at the uh, Board of Education. We didn't this last year, I don't think, but anyway, uh, have y'all worked out where that may I, th I think we talked about having it here. Having <laughs> it here, yeah. Just a little more room spread out here, a little easier. Yeah. And, and if you notice on, on, on May 23rd, we also uh, listed a joint health and education and budget and finance committee for, I know uh, Mr. Urban is, is a newer to this. That way they could both hear it at the, at the same time. Guys, he's, he's putting that out there uh, for your benefit too, in case you know you've got a conflict. So hey, you, you've got a business and you know you have to be out. Some of this is flexible. We might could change some dates. So look at it closely. You know, we can, uh, I don't, do, you, do we need to approve this for you? Yes. Yes. It, you know, this okay. will go to commission for approval. And we could come back and request a change if we need to. Commissioner Johnson. Uh, Michael, I'm sure that uh, a copy of this will be in our book at the very front, correct? The schedule? Yes. Oh, yes. 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 In okay. your budget books, yes. You do good work. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, the pur purpose of this, of approving it now, is to give it to Rachel so she can or to uh, advertise advertise all the meetings for the year at one time in January. Yeah, and this has been shared with the director of schools and his board and the school's finance director as well um, to to let them have any comment as well since they're a major portion of our budget. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Does this have to be approved by the full commission? Yes, we do. It does, so it'll be on next Thursday's agenda. C could you print out a hard copy for everyone, and put it on their desk so that they'll have it in front of sure. them? We'll be glad to. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> you want to read every date? <laughs> I like the way you think, Commissioner. <laughs> Is there any other business before? Commissioner. Tentatively scheduled for January the 4th is our steering committee meeting, but we're also going to piggyback it with meeting with the delegates. So it is imperative 
that you get any questions that you want to me before so I can give them an opportunity to, to answer it instead of going off and getting off on a tangent about a whole bunch of other stuff. I want to try to make the meeting extremely pointed on the uh, question. So I'm telling all the committees and uh, let you know that I'll need those in at least a week before the 4th. And that could change because some half of them are agreeing to it, some half of them, you know, don't know yet. So, but I have it scheduled for January 4th at 5.30 in here. Anything further? We're dismissed.